So how you been, man? Oh, not too bad. Tired. Yeah, I hear you, man. <laughs> yeah, well, at least it's Friday, right? Do you have to work tomorrow? No, I say I'm I'm off. Uh, I have SRT Monday through Thursday next week, and then I go back down to the academy. Oh, uh, we'll, okay. have to, we'll, we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, I'm curious to know what that's about. Good deal. <laughs> Good deal, man. Well, grab a beer, man. Yeah. Just chill out. We're just going to, just like we're hanging out in orbit, man. We're just chilling and talking. Guardian down. What's up, everybody? Thanks for hanging out with us today. Welcome to episode 69. Yeah, I said it. Of Guardian Indeed. Downcast. <laughs> We're a couple dads that talk about all things in the Destiny universe and interview content creators and community members to find out more about them. Think of us as the lighter side of Destiny Talk. I'm your host, The Gator. And my co host, Mr. Hazelnut, is here. Hey, man, how's your week been so far? Been chaos all over. So, you know, not. Not too much, um, aside from the chaos of everything that's going on right now with the election and everybody's holding their breath, like nationwide, no matter who you vote for. And, uh, you know, unless you voted for like the Libertarian Party, in which case then you know, you're just sort of, you know, yeah, it's, you know, you lost. It's like, um, our, it's like but, our whole, it's like our whole country's on hold right now. Please hold. Yeah. Yeah. Pause. Yep. So, yeah. But, uh, how are you doing, man? Doing great, man. I, uh, I, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Green Eyed Music Lover. They they gave us a shout out on their last podcast with the Focus Fire chat, and uh, we talked about Blue last week, but we didn't mention Green Eyed Music Lover. She's she's definitely been a, an integral part of our uh, our podcast. So uh, I know they have uh, combined their their podcast Discord with the Guardian Lore podcast. So now it's called the Lore Hub. So just mm. uh, FYI for everybody out there. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, it's just been one of those weeks where I've been getting my work done. I'm doing good. But uh, like I said, it's like everything's on hold. So I, I'm not surprised, to be honest. But uh, hey, yeah. joining us tonight, he's a new guest of the show. He's been around the community for quite some time. In fact, I first found out about this guy when I first joined the Dad's Tales Discord. And I've always wanted to know his story. He's a fellow gamer and streams occasionally on YouTube. It's our new friend of the show, RPG Magnet. How you doing tonight, sir? Hey, how you guys doing? Good, man. Good, man. Well, I'm good, man. So, quick overview of tonight's show. First, we're I want to know RPG story, and we're going to get into that tonight. Hazel's going to go over the TWAB for this 22nd and final week of Season of Arrivals. God, it's been a long. It's about time, man. It's been a long <laughs> journey, brother. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we've gone through two. Yeah, I can seasons. only sigh so much. Ah, exactly, man. <laughs> hey, that's it, guys. This is it. This uh, I usually release this on Sunday night, Monday morning. So by the time you're hearing this, the next day will be a new Christmas day for Dis for Destiny. So uh, it's gonna be awesome. Also tonight, we're gonna test RPG's fast thinking ability with our signature fast fire question and answer segment we call the Speed Run. Finally, we'll answer questions from our community and add two songs each to our award-winning Guardian Downcast show playlist on Spotify and iTunes. All right, let's roll. Hey, gang, just a quick reminder. We now have a Destiny 2 clan, and Hazel and I invite you to be a part of it. If you're looking to find a clan, now would be a great time to jump in and get to know some of these people that you've heard on the show. And we're not hardcore, so you don't have to worry about, like, you know, us slave driving you to do raids and shit like that. Enjoying your time is basically all that we ask. So, if you're looking for a clan out there, we have a permanent link in our Discord under our channel GDC Destiny 2 Clan, where you can find a link. Otherwise, look for Guardian Downcast or D-O-W-N is our call sign. We do ask that you join our Discord first, so that way we can communicate clan nights and things along those lines. And aside from that, you can lurk all you like. Thanks very much, gang. All right. Hey, RPG. I, hey. Uh, hey, I thank you so much for coming on to our show, man. Um, I, I think, remember. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think uh, you and I joined the Dad Tales uh, Discord like probably around the same time. 
and I ran in there and going like, oh, I like this guy with his uh, Colossus Kal-El name. I really, <laughs> I thought that was cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's, a, that's a name I made as a younger video gamer nerd that loves the uh, loves comics. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. And well, so, PlayStation being yeah. PlayStation, you can't change it. Well, you couldn't do it, but now yeah, you, you can if you... Yeah. yeah. That's so. thrown on me, I guess. <laughs> That's cool, that, man. So, um, well, just, you know, tell us about yourself. Like, uh, where'd you grow up? Uh, things like that. Uh, I, grew, I'm, I live in West Virginia. I was uh, born and raised here. Uh, I'm currently right now a police officer in the city that I live in here in Bridgeport with my wife. Well, yeah, you got any kids? Yeah, I, we have uh, one little girl. Oh, you're in the same oh, boat, oh, same man. boat as Hazel. Yeah, she's uh, she's about two and a half now. That's cool, man. Good deal. Nice. Yeah. So you live you're in West Virginia. Yeah, you're you're really close to uh, to Send Media. He's over in that oh, area really? too. Yeah, he's from that area too. Well, let me ask you this. Um, you say you're a police officer now. Were you always a police officer? Or did you did you begin somewhere else? No, actually, uh, for here where I live, the city I live in now, I've only been a police officer here for about three years. Okay. Prior to that, I was a military police officer for about nine years, and then I, I, once I got out of the military, I didn't really have a set plan of what I wanted to do. So I did everything from I worked at Kroger's to GameStop to Loomis. Uh, like the um, the, the armored truck. Oh, okay. I was asking yeah. if it was a. Oh, yeah, a yeah, yeah. I was thinking fishing. And, I was thinking fishing lures. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the armored truck guys, and nice. I did manual labor. At one point, I was at the FBI doing like background checks and stuff. That's cool. Um, just put my toes in everything. Well, I saw a pic. I, I'm trying to remember which um, which <laughs> Discord I saw it in, but I saw a pic of of uh, some cadets at a at a table, maybe eating grub. Um, yeah. are, are you still yeah. involved in, uh, in, in the school or? Yeah, there's for West Virginia, the police, uh, there's only one police academy in the entire state of West Virginia. Oh, wow. And, uh, every police officer that you see in West Virginia goes through that academy. It's run by our state police, but they, uh, they have a program set up where they'll bring down, you know, one or two, um, they call them fellowship officers to, uh, be instructors along with the state police for that class. So there, there's uh, five of us that are instructors for this current class. Okay. Hmm. So you you also instructor? That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah and it's wow. it's uh it's uh, paramilitary, so it's it's just like basic training. So that school they go in all different branches of military and police. What's that? I mean, the the, the cadets that are at that school. Do they just go right into the police force or do they go and you said paramilitary. So are they, or do they go, they have different branches of military and, and where they can no, go. I'm sorry. We're not, let's say paramilitary. Uh, it's, it's, they model it after. Okay. I got you. Like uh, basic training or boot camp, Right. That right. the mil- that the uh, military does. So a lot of stress uh, okay. inducing and uh, <clears throat> like, I don't want to say sleep deprivation because uh, we're not, supposed to really be doing that that's, but that's not what happens right oh we're not talking about seal yeah. training i mean yeah <laughs> well, we never yell at him either we're always really nice and we we, we uh yeah you coddle them uh, and absolutely you burp them and <laughs> we, yeah they, they, i don't think anybody there has been yelled at they always want to come back after they leave so wow oh that's so awesome man yeah. we're wow. super nice that's cool i like that <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all right well sir you said your daughter is two and a half yeah oh man i remember those days yeah it's, it's <laughs> fun she's so she's just starting to learn and and, and talk and her little sentences oh. that so, some words make sense and other ones don't but i just agree with her my my favorite part of that age is you can actually walk them. They actually hold you with that yeah. little tiny hand, and you're like lower, yep. you're like lowering your shoulder, like okay, let's go over here. At least, hey, at least you can direct them. You know, I mean, yeah. When I get home, she wants to she wants to drag me everywhere because I'm I'm I stay at the academy uh, all through the week. I don't come home at all because it's down in the southern part of the state. And sure. I'll come home 
Friday evenings. And as soon as I get home, she basically is attached to my hip the entire time. Yeah, she's ready for daddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's great, man. All right. Well, sir, um, tell us about your gaming history. Where did you start? That kind of thing. Uh, well, I was talking to my buddy about this actual question. And uh, the earliest game memory that I have is we had an arcade at the mall when I was about five or six. And my mom, she would take me there. And uh, you remember the old arcade cabinets? You know, oh. when nobody's playing them, there's a demo going on, just showing off the game. And yeah. Yeah. I specifically remember the old X Men arcade cabinet, and I love that game. Well, yeah. That's what you do when that's what you do when you don't have any money. <laughs> you well, just, yeah, you just getting, stare at him. <laughs> that, that, my mom, she would put me in front of one of these games because I was just fascinated with them, yeah. and I'd sit there and you know mash the buttons and use the joystick, just thinking I was like beating the crap out of this guy in a wrestling game. <laughs> and she didn't spend any money at all, and she said she'd leave, leave me there for like hours. Wow. <laughs> could could be I worse. Mean, you could be spending hours there, and then uh, your whole paycheck's gone. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like I was when I was a little <laughs> teenager. But uh, oh that, yeah, dude, you, it sounds like you you started the same way I did. At least I don't know about Hazel, but those yeah, wooden, same wooden, definitely the same way with yeah, me. Those, yeah, those cabinet like, consoles. Yeah, arcades. Yeah, yep. My favorite were always the one arcades that had um like the 12 or 16 different like Nintendo games. Oh yeah. Built in. Yeah. You could go through and pick like which one you wanted to do. And yeah. That the, kind of thing. the screen would like rotate. It was so cool. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah. The, the multi consoles. Yeah. They're really nice. Well, when was, what was the first gaming console you, you first played? I, I would say the super Nintendo or the Sega. Okay. Um, when I was little, my mom, uh, we had a babysitter. She would take me to, and she, Sheila, she, that was my babysitter's name. She, she watched me from the time I was like two until I was middle school, so wow. fifth grade. And uh, she had a son, Joey, and she also watched two other guys there that were around my age. So Joey would always get every single system that came out. So any system that came out, we were always playing the newest stuff. It was awesome, dude. Instant friends. That's awesome, man. I yeah. Love it. <laughs> So like N64 when it came out, we loved it because you know they had the four controller ports and there's four of us, so we we're playing Goldeneye. Oh, uh, good Goldeneye, nice. Goldeneye, fucking dark. Yeah, God. those were the best. Why can't video games be like that anymore? Oh yeah, I mean the the days of innocence in video games, you know. Well, I, I remember thinking playing Goldeneye. Like I wish there was some way that I could spend money to get a different hat for Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, when I'm while i'm shooting my friends <laughs> i just want to spend money while i'm playing it yeah i hear you i thought that too that's funny so All right, sir. well um yeah good get her no i was just gonna ask you where, where did it go from there i mean do you, i think you said you were into playstation were you a playstation player or an xbox guy uh i had both and it's been like that with every generation i've, I've always had both nice i tend to lean more towards sony yeah. uh I don't know. Maybe it's just because uh, I like the PlayStation One a lot, and I'm kind of partial to them. But uh, I like both systems for different reasons. Yeah, M mainly exclusives. But well, I think see that. I think Xbox has it down as far as community UI and stuff. They're really yeah. good at gamer score and stuff. I yeah. love that. I wish Sony would do that. I, I'm sorry, guys. You Sony guys out there, don't don't at me. But I hate that trophy system. I don't like that trophy system. I like scores, man. Give me a number. But I don't know. That's just always been me. I've never been motivated to do the trophy system on on PlayStation. I mean, I get trophies, but yeah, I, I like that gamer score because that that tells you how long you've been gaming on that system. Oh yeah, it, it goes back to when you were playing uh, yeah. Xbox 360 too. Oh, oh yeah, it, it carries on. I, I love oh, it. Wow, that was the smartest thing they could have done, man. Yeah, but Sony man just looks so pretty. <laughs> that UI is so smooth, man. God, it's nice. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was watching the PS5 review on uh, Verge.com, and I'm I think that that's actually kind of what swayed me to go towards the route of uh, PC, actually, uh, because I was watching the uh, Miles Morales trailer, or like they were reviewing the Miles Morales game for Spider-Man, 
and they were just like well you can turn on ray tracing but it drops it to 30 frames per second yeah i saw that today too yeah and i was like i felt gutted and i'm like i i'm like oh but uh but if you turn off ray tracing then it's 60 frames and all the the loveliness that that is yeah but uh yeah so you know shed a tear you kind of want both at the same time well yeah exactly like well then they showed like um the one guy who had a three thousand dollar computer and (laughs) that'd be nice it was insane yeah yeah he had ray tracing and 60 frames and i'm like i'm not gonna spend three thousand dollars dude you don't you don't have to these days i mean it's so inexpensive i I, I say inexpensive in quotes yes it's (laughs) definitely gonna be more than a console probably but you can still get a great PC, which you can use for other things, by the way. Uh, but I tell you, my my greatest thing with Beyond Light coming up here is seeing on Steam, Hazelnut is online. That's gonna be so cool to see. Fuck, you're gonna, dude. You can't. I can't wait for you to. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, well, uh, I, all right, I, RPG. So, um, you said that you haven't played Destiny in a little bit. Hey, I haven't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's fine, man. Well, how did you start playing Destiny? I started playing Destiny. Um, I was always a big Halo fan. And um, I, I saw previews for Destiny 1. And it, it really interested me where I thought they were going to go with lore and just the, uh, the whole background of the game. Before it even came out, I was in- anticipating that game a lot. And uh, I started playing Destiny on day one. And uh, the thing I was impressed the most about it was the community and how it yeah. it, it was designed to bring people to, together to play with cooperatively. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Because I don't remember any other game that had ever done that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like some of my... Uh, I was... Again, the, the friend I'm probably going to mention a few more times is uh, Doug. His tag's Famished Wolf. Uh, I don't know where he got it. So, <laughs> But uh, we, we were talking about Destiny 1 the other day. And uh, we had we found a group of friends on there. And we, we probably played uh, Crota's End. And um, what was the first one called? I can't remember. The Vault, first of, Vault, Vault of Glass? Oh yeah, Vault sure. of Glass. Yeah, yeah. We we probably played it every night. Uh even when we weren't getting a, a uh the weekly reward to reset for months every night. Just cuz it was fun to go through the whole mechanisms of the the raid together with your friends. Yeah. You got any uh nice. you got any great uh maybe one gaming memory? from your past in destiny one or destiny two that you uh, can, can remember and share with us. Ooh, I know there's a lot. There's a lot of them out there. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I mean, honestly, I think, I think just going through Crota's end the first time and figuring out you jump down in there and like the first air you get to, is completely pitch black, and then you have those <laughs> oh, yeah, that's swarmers right. coming after you. Scared the hell insane. out of me. <laughs> that was the, awesome. our, our whole party was just screaming like little children. We were trying to run away. It was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fell off a big. Uh, if you ran backwards from where you spawned in, you just fall down a crevice. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. So I, I think just experiencing a raid like that for the first time, and you guys figuring out the the mechanics together of the raid and. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's why Destiny is a, a great game. Yeah, you're all on an adventure, man, and you're all in it together. You know, do or die. That's it's yeah. a cool, cool feeling. It's and it's very, uh, it's very iconic to Destiny. You know, those raids, oh, yeah. those, ra- those raids are like unlike anything else I've ever seen in yeah. video games. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. I I'm just like thinking back to when I was like going over like. Yeah, Crota was your Crota was your jam. Time. Crota was your jam, man. You did a lot of a lot of Crotas, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I loved Crota. He, he was my, my nice strike boss, ultimately. <laughs> but uh but yeah, so that's cool, man. So are you playing any other games at the moment then? Yeah, actually right now I 
tend to play Modern Warfare. I haven't for the last week or so, just because it's getting kind of old. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you guys have tried the Ghost of Tsushima the not, Legends mode, but not, it, it is fantastic. I, I've seen it. It looks beautiful. It, it's fantastic, and it reminds me of Destiny a little bit, the way they have the gear set up, the really? how it's cooperative. Uh, huh. You level up with your gear, too, just like you would in Destiny, so... Really? Yeah. And you can, huh. there's actually four different classes you can pick. It, it's a free update for Ghost if you, if you have the game. So I highly recommend trying that out if you, nice. if you have it. I, I haven't bought that one yet. I, I still have the, uh, what's that walking simulator game I still have in my, my library I haven't played yet? Um, Destiny? No. No. <laughs> no. Oh. no. Destiny. <laughs> Jesus. Get this guy! Out of here. I couldn't resist. I, I couldn't know. resist. Uh, uh, Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Yeah, Death it's Stranding the Elmer Fudd right. game. Yeah, it's yeah. the Elmer Fudd game where you're the UPS guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And easy. I'm sorry, I haven't gotten past the uh, this this the self screen. The, the title screen. No, yeah. I haven't, I haven't done that yet. Done <laughs> I'd like to try it. It it looks interesting in a Hideo Kojima game. I'm sure it is very interesting. I'm sure Hideo, Hideo has really great storytelling, so I'm sure that's oh, yeah. the part I would love about it. I just don't know if mm-hmm. I would want to walk up mountains forever. I don't know. <laughs> hey, it's uh, actually a pretty awesome game. Yeah. I You know, I, I did want to mention one thing. I did notice, I was looking through your uh, your YouTube channel. I noticed you play Battlefield. Oh, yeah. uh, big, dude, big Battlefield fan. Me too. I, I played a, so many hours of Battlefield before Destiny even came out. Uh, yeah. Are you waiting for that? Are you waiting for that new modern shooter from Battlefield? I know I am. Absolutely. Uh, okay. When uh, we just become best friends, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think four was amazing. I oh, mean, as you can see on my my YouTube channel, it's my favorite. I, I, I love Battlefield Four because there's just there's so much going on around the maps. You got people flying jets, having their own separate thing, fighting each other, or you got snipers shooting each other from across the map. It, there's a lot going on. Oh, oh, oh! By the way, the weather changes too. A destiny. Yeah. We've been doing that for a long time. Says Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot more going on than just the three lane map you have on. Yes. Normal shooters and Battlefield One came out and I was kind of hesitant mm. a little bit because I love the modern warfare stuff. Yeah. And it was actually pretty good. And I tried Five out. I was trying to force myself to like it, and I just I can't can't do it. I, uh, I, I, I mean, I played a lot of modern, I played a lot of, uh, uh, um, Call of Duty, you know, back when they went to World War II and World yeah. War One game. And I just, I, I got into them back then because they shot a lot like a modern shooter, but I yeah. just, I just couldn't fly paper, paper thin airplanes around and drop bombs. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't get into it. I really couldn't. I mean, yep. I mean, the, uh, the, the, uh, the foot soldier action and everything was still the same. I like that part, but the problem I had with, with uh, the latest battlefield is I could not pick up the enemies to save my life. It was something was not the same. I mean, there was a video one time of, of, uh, I think it was, um, Jack frags and he would, he sat in a, a, it was so bad at one point. They patched it since, but they'd already lost mm-hmm. me. But he sat and laid down in an enemy spawn and counted how many people ran by him without even shooting them. <laughs> yeah, it was that, it was that bad. The same video. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was pathetic. But anyway, yep. I, I, good. I'm, I'm. Believe me, man. I'm waiting for a, a next level modern shooter from Battlefield, and hopefully, it, it's on the way soon. Uh, we yeah. need it. it. I mean, if I had to pick between the two big franchises competing against each other, it would be. Yeah. Battlefield over Call of Duty. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Huh. Well, nice man. Since we're since we're on the questions, uh, since we're we're still on Destiny, so to speak. What is your favorite PVE loadout? Loadout. If you're going in to play uh, Destiny One or Destiny Two, what kind of weapons are you going to be using, or what kind of loadouts? PVE. So, <laughs> as we mentioned before, I haven't played in a long time. But no, that's fine. The the, the weapon that sticks out in my mind the most was the Vault of Glass uh, reward. The Vex Mythoclast. Is that what it's called? Oh, yes. 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 And, and right after you were able to get it, before they patched it, how amazing that gun was. I got it after patch, by the way, finally. 
I was it, like, it's still awesome. It, 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 it was. I, I remember standing on the moon and looking at it going, this is just an amazing weapon. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Did, was it just PVE? Was well, it? I mean, were you a, uh, were you, are you a, like a pulse rifle guy or your hand cannon guy? What, what kind of weapons do you like to use on your primary? Or do you mix I, it up? I like the hand cannons. Hmm? Oh, fate bringer was the big one. That oh, was my all-time favorite. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the exploding rounds, the fast reloads. Yeah, that, that's my that's my all time favorite PVE weapon in the game. Well, if that's you one or two. if you play PVP, what would you jump in in PVP now or then? Uh, it was it uh, Uriel's gift. Yes, yes. The, uh, oh yeah, the auto roll. Yeah. Four fifty. It, it, it's I know they patch stuff and they change weapon damages and stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's been. At least when I played, still it was consistently one of the better weapons you can use in PvP. It was its range. Mm-hmm. Its range was just so sticky. Yeah, such yeah. a great weapon. Well, they actually re-released that too, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah. So it has the same. Nice. It has the same uh, range, but the uh, actual damage per bullet is a lot less, and it, it's just the four fifties have been nerfed quite a bit. It's all about yeah. it's all about six hundreds, but that's going to change. I think I think next season, and we'll talk about this, but I think next season is going to be all about hand cannons. I might have to finally learn how to use one. I might have to jump back in then. It's yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> I mean, they've done so much to hand cannons in our last <laughs> swabs over the last few shows we've been talking about, it, but but yeah, good deal, man, good deal. Hey, thanks for listening to Guardian Downcast. You can find us on Twitter at Guardian underscore D underscore cast. <sighs> or, you know, you can find us on Instagram at Guardian underscore down underscore cast and see what picks our weekly guests want to share with you. Or, or Hazel, just visit our website at GuardianDownCast.com for all the contact information and where else you want to find us. And you can also play any past episodes you like in any order you like right from your browser don't you or or me man anyway so hey guardians check us out and later guardians toddles hey that's my line man all right sir so let's sort of break out of the destiny type questions man so basically to get to know you better do you have any hobbies besides gaming? Uh, yeah, I like, uh, my wife, she, uh, she laughs at me because right now we only have one car and she uses it. I, I just have my police cruiser and she always asks if I'd like to get a car, another one. And I say no, because the only other place I go besides home or work is the gym. Nice. So that I'm, I'm always working out of, I've, I've been that way since, uh, high school. It's lifting. Uh, I've been in boxing for 12 years now. Um, Muay Thai. Um, besides that, I've always been a big comic book nerd ever since I was a little kid. Not to bring the mood down or anything, but uh, my uh, mom, she raised me by herself until I was about six, I think, when she married my stepdad. So before that, I didn't really have a father figure. So, like, my father figure uh, up until that point was Superman, Batman. And I, I kind of modeled myself off of them, like, what mm-hmm. was right and what was wrong. So, it, comics have always had a uh, soft place in my heart, so. Nice, man. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's awesome. I think a lot of kids looked up to comics. I mean, I, unfortunately, I was... Uh, I was not a comic book guy. I oh, set yeah. up. I set up army men. I was an army man guy. It's a little plastic. <laughs> I mean, I was very analog. I mean, when I was younger. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's cool, man. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Well, dude, I got to ask. I was into comics when I was growing up. Yeah. Oh, you were too. Yeah. All of right. Course, man. Mar- Marvel or DC? Uh, for Ooh. me, when I was growing up, it was Marvel. I mean, for me, it was Spider Man and Venom. And that, I mean, that's what I was like into. RPG. What about you? I'm sorry. What you uh, Marvel or DC? Oh, uh, growing up, I would say Marvel. 
you got the X Men animated show, the Spider Man animated oh, show. Yeah. yeah. But I think now uh, I'm more DC. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm nostalgic for the Batman animated TV series. And uh, Batman's my all time favorite comic book character. So. Well, yeah, I'm actually, I'm like, just like him, you know, I'm back into DC now too, where I'm like, uh, like there's a new Batman out there where it's like, uh, the three jokers. Yep. So, yeah, it, it, and it's interesting how they did that. Cause the fans that they're like, Hey, these jokers don't look the same, but it's been the same Batman for all these years and it doesn't act the same. So it, it's interesting how they kind of tied in him changing yeah. over the years to an actual story. Mm-hmm. Well, I got to ask it, Hazel. Yes. I, I want to know this. This is my, my question that I want to know. RPG. Dude. Yeah. What's up with the gamer tag? The RPG magnet. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so it, Afghanistan and uh, the army, I was, I was over in Afghanistan in uh, 2011. Okay. Uh, we were in the far northeastern part of the country, and it was it was pretty hostile. Uh, and when we were there, we work with the Afghan army all the time. Every mission we, we go out, the Afghan army is always there with us. So um, I got a reputation with my with the army and with the Afghans over there of always being the one that got blown up because. Oh, no. oh, uh, when they initiate combat over there for us in our area, um, they always initiated it by blowing up one of our vehicles or attempting to uh, with either IEDs, uh, improvised explosive devices, mm-hmm. or uh, an RPG. And I'm, this is a gaming channel, so I'm sure everybody knows what an RPG is. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the, my uh, the, the guy in charge of me, my platoon sergeant, he would actually move me around to different vehicles, like uh, before we go on missions, <laughs> oh, because shit. every single vehicle I was in would be the one that got blown up, and oh, then they initiate, yeah, then they initiate the small arms fire after that. Wow! So uh, the the Afghans uh, police, the Afghan army, they started calling me RPG Magnet, and it just kind of stuck. <laughs> what so. a dance! What a story, man. <laughs> I would have wow. never, I would have never guessed that. I was thinking RPGs from like, you know, a video game or something. But. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought when, when I made it. I was like, there's going to be people like asking me about like Dragon Quest and stuff, and <laughs> yeah, I had yeah. no idea. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, that is that. I think that's the best story that we've heard. No <laughs> offense to anybody else. Pretty but... damn good. Pretty damn good. <laughs> Come like on now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, sir, um, another question for you here is, yeah. do you have a motto or mantra? Yeah, actually. Or a couple uh, of them. Yeah, I wrote them down. No. This guy came prepared, Hazel. See? See? Oh, you can here prepare. You can prepare, you can prepare for a podcast, Hazel. <laughs> oh, I well, should take notes. <laughs> so, like I said before, uh, big comic book fan. Uh, did you guys read the uh, Civil War story arc with Marvel? Um, I didn't read it, but I'm familiar with it, yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is just a quote that really stuck with me. I mean, especially in today's world. I don't like getting political or anything, but um, this is, Captain America said this in the... Uh, in the story, I forget which exact issue it was, but uh, he says, <clears throat> he says, it doesn't matter what the press says. It doesn't matter what the politicians or the mobs say. It doesn't matter if the whole country decides that something wrong is something right. This nation was founded on one principle above all else, the requirement that we stand up for what we believe, no matter the odds or the consequences. When the mob and the press and the whole world tell you to move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth and tell the whole world, no, you move. <laughs> Shit. I like that. Yeah. That's it, just always stuck with me. That's a very Captain America thing to say. That's a very America thing. I like it. Damn. Well, good deal, man. I like that. 
All right, I've got one more to ask. I don't know if you have any more to ask, Kazel, but uh, got to go with my signature question here, man. Yeah. RPG Magnet, what's one thing about you that no one knows? When I say no one, I mean our gaming community and buds here. Hmm. Could be small, could be big. It's up to you. All right, I got two of them. I'm a big fan of orchestral music. Uh, hmm. Whether it's like Beethoven or Bach, all the way to Hans Zimmer with uh, his incredible soundtracks he makes. It's actually really good music to work out to and run to. Really? Yeah. What do I, you recommend? To For... Uh, for working out or running or one of each. Oh, just a specific song or yeah. Well, uh, the what is it? Modern Modern Warfare Two soundtrack is very good. That's one of my favorites by Hans Zimmer. He did that. Yeah. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. I, I like I like all kinds of music. I actually played in your the. the uh, symphonic band in high school we, we got pretty good Not really went to states and everything and we were really good and uh yeah it's great being a part of a big music group like that yeah all right well what's your what's your next one <laughs> so uh my wife she's a big fan of the bachelor and the bachelorette <laughs> <laughs> and uh i already like where this is going oh yeah so um uh, <laughs> You know, when when I first see her watching it, I'm like that, that's stupid. And then, then I start sitting down next to her, and I'm still calling it stupid. And then, you know, after a while, I'm sitting there <laughs> watching it every week with her, and I'm like into the show now. Like, what's he doing that for? <laughs> I was just gonna say, why did he pick her? <laughs> yeah, that's that's dumb. That's he, awesome. He, she needs to send him home. <laughs> I think we just That's found the awesome. title. I think we just found the title, man. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks, man. I like we appreciate it. it. Hazel, you got anything yeah. else? Anything else you want to ask? No. No. That's awesome, though. Great, man. Th- hey, thanks for sharing your life with us, man. I know hey, a, lot no of, problem, man. a lot of people don't I like to it. open up. So, I mean, it's it's a cool thing when people come on the show and want to talk about their life. I love it. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy it, man. Well, Hazel, I think I'm getting a little rusty. It's been a while since we've. It's been a while. It's been a while since we've done uh, the good old speed run. Keep what do you it think, up, man? We're gonna fucking you keep it up, man. No, We're gonna add, no, we'll no. Go back to the playlist. That's okay. But. <laughs> Sorry, it's been in my head, man. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> damn it. I think we're. Uh, I think we're due for a speed run, man. What do you think? I believe so. It's been a while. All right. No, don't don't do that to me, man. Don't. No. All right, we'll do it right after this. Call the Praxic Order, call the Thanatonauts, the Jinsen Scribes, call everyone so they can witness you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the week. Man, we haven't done a speed run in a while here. This segment is called the Speed Run. This is where we have a database of over 125 randomly asked questions. An RPG magnet here will have 60 seconds to answer as many as you can. These are short one or two word answers, and at the end of the year, the guest with the most answered will win a cool prize and the title of 2020 speedrun champion. The questions are randomly asked, so no one can memorize the order. And just, you know what, RPG, just answer whatever comes to mind, man. There's no right or wrong answers. So tonight, as usual, I'm going to ask the questions randomly from our list. Hazel is our timekeeper and quality control expert. So in the event of a questionable answer, Hazel's decision will be final, unless I have to double check it. Uh, Zan- <laughs> Xanafan711. Xanafan711 is our, still our leader at 27 questions answered. So, RPG Magnet, you ready, man? I think so. I'm I know. Give my best. It's daunting. Just have fun, man. <laughs> if you get it, you get it. If not, we had fun. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Morning person or night owl? Morning person. Coffee or tea? Tea. Favorite color? Blue. Warlock, Titan, or Hunter? Titan. UFC or WWE? UFC. If you had more time, what would you do with it? Train more. Mar- Mario or Sonic? Mario. Grenades or melees? Grenades. Mac or PC? PC. What was your first music album? Three Doors Down's first album. How do you like your steak? Medium rare. What's the worst job you've ever had? 
Kroger's. DC or Marvel? DC. Is chili soup? No. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Would you rather be feared or loved by everyone? Feared. Apple or Android? Apple. Tupac or Biggie? Biggie. What would your spirit animal be? A wombat. Pineapple on pizza? No. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> that was that was a. I now I think I found our title. <laughs> that was fucking awesome, man. I love it. I love it. Well, Hazel, what do we got? All right. We've got twenty. That was a good shot, man. Uh- Dude, 27, I don't, I mean, it took a long time to beat Sin and Kingsley, and I don't know what Zan, Zan was just. Who got 27? Zan of Fan 7-Eleven. Yeah. Is he like an auctioneer or something? I don't know, man. He's going pretty fast. I don't know, but he, he, you know what's funny, though? When he came on that night on that show, I think he had done some studying, but he he played it down like he really wasn't, but man, he was on (laughs) his game, man. (laughs) <laughs> it was. I, don't, I think he. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't put it past him if he actually memorized all the questions. <laughs> Good deal, man. Whole spreadsheet, dude. That's a solid. That's a solid score, man. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Uh, hey, all listeners out there, I've got a question for you. Do you have a great speed run question? If that's a yes, then join our Discord and enter them into our speed run question ideas channel. And we'll add them for next year's speed run. Just remember, they need to be yes or no, or one or two word answers. Either or questions will also be accepted. At the end of the year, we're having a drawing. And a $25 gift card of your choice will be in the up for grabs. And you can enter up to five questions to go into the drawing. So good luck. All right. Well, good deal, man. Uh, I think it is time to talk about this week at Bungie. All right, Hazel, this week at Bungie, the last TWAB before the new season, Beyond Light, or actually Season of the Hunt. So what do we got this week? I think it's both Beyond Light and Season of the Hunt. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well the, wait a minute. So technically, got... the, the expansion is Beyond Light, and the season is called Season of the Hunt. That's I'll let, why I'll, I said both. I'll let it, I'll let it, it later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we have a, well, they have in the TWAB here, they have a quick update about the launch trailer that went out there. Um, what do you guys think about the launch trailer? I don't think we really talked about it before. So uh, any, you know, Destiny, man, they get me hyped up real easily when it comes to uh, any kind of Vidoc or, or any kind of special, you know, uh, little teasers or, Anything like that? I mean, I I, I thought it was great. Um, it it kind of bl- I mean they have thrown so many launch trailers at us that I'm trying to remember which one this one was. I've just watched them. I've been eating them like candy, man. I'm just like you know. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you watched but, it uh, RPG? Yeah, I, I did watch it. It's just like the uh, the the one with paid, uh, the beginning of the the Destiny two trailer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At the bar. Uh, the the well. The one where he ends up, spoilers. We, are we doing spoilers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. The the one where he dies and he goes down in the pit. And he's riding the thing down. He looks like a cowboy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's oh great. my gosh, that Bungie does an excellent job with trailers. Just like uh, Blizzard, they remind me a lot mm-hmm. of Blizzard with their trailers. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, they do. So, um, well, one thing I had a question for you, uh, RPG, while uh, we're on the subject of the trailer, is that uh, you said that you did watch it, and you said you took a break. And are you looking at maybe getting back in now at all, or are you still like, eh, I'm good? No, actually, Doug and I, we were playing uh, Ghost of Tsushima this week, and we were talking about the, the new expansion coming out for Destiny. And... Uh, we we both are thinking about getting back into it. I was actually going to do it this week, but like I said, I, I go down to the Academy for the week and I don't yeah. have my destiny two disc down there with me. I had it still installed on my system. I just didn't have the disc to be able to play it. Otherwise I've been playing this week, but so I'll, I'll probably take it down with me 
this coming week. Oh, nice, man. Awesome. Well, um, then this will be, you know, something that um, you'll uh, benefit from because uh, some of the changes in the TWAB coming up are, well, um, just to be brutally honest here, this was a really light TWAB. I mean, I was I was expecting way more. But, um, yeah, we didn't get that. So, anyway, um, one thing here is going to be archives. So with this, there's a quest archive, which is basically going to be a little uh, kiosk that you can go to to get quests that um, basically you discontinued or that you gave up on in the past and things like that. So they had a similar thing in D1 that they probably, I think they put it out in uh, the last season in the Rise of Iron, I believe. Um, but I never went to it because I did all my damn quests. So I thought it was kind of useless, but Hey, if this is uh, something that you do and you need to pick up some quests that you abandoned, then Hey, this is for you. Um, and then the other one was the, whoa, 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 whoa. You forgot the most, the best part, man. This is the part that got me excited. If you can actually run the new light story through this, this archive for, for veteran players, this is we can actually source the new the yeah. new light story. Well, I mean, at least we can get a taste well, of I'm it. I'm just deleting like. my warlock. I'm, oh, I'm just okay. deleting my warlock and going through that way. Well, you don't have to do that. That's what I'm saying. You can just you can run the you can no. run the the mission. Okay, whatever. Just mention no. it. No, I'm, I'm going to delete my warlock. I'm going to try to do it twice if I can. Uh, PSA: Don't delete your characters. Just run through the damn archive here. You're fine. <laughs> all right. I, I'm sorry. That was all I had to say. Yes, but yes, that is a very cool point. Um, but um, it's easier just to delete your warlock, no matter who you are. So, um, <sighs> if only we had video right now. I'm sure Gator's face would be amazing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's probably giving me the finger. But anyway. Oops. Um, <laughs> the next monument that they have is called the Monument to Lost Lights Exotic Archive. So here players can acquire uh, various exotics and legendary pinnacles or pursuit weapons um, that we base or that Bungie basically retired. So it's I, I'm very anxious to see how this plays out. I don't know if they're just going to have everything sitting out there like Terraba and Anarchy and then you can go pick it up and, you know, it will cost a little bit of glimmer. Um, destination materials, master working materials, an exotic cipher, ascendant shards, that kind of thing um, to purchase them. But uh, yeah, I'm very intrigued to see how they're going to do this because I don't know. Are you just going to buy an exotic? I don't, I don't know exactly how they're going to pull this off. I'm imagining that they're going to do it, um, that it's going to, I mean, it sounds like you can just buy them, but I'm hoping that you can buy the buy a quest to get it. So, like with um, like mountaintop, you had to like get like thousand like double kills and uh, calculated trajectory things, just a bunch of things to keep you playing, so that way you're always working towards it. Yeah, I get. But uh, with this, it sounds like you're just going to be able to buy this shit. Hmm. Uh, exotic uh, ciphers i mean hopefully you know last season or this season i should say we got one exotic cipher in our in our uh our season pass bar and that was it mm -hmm. there weren't any well other you can available. only hold one i believe yeah but once you use it i'm just what i'm saying is once you use it it's uh you can't get them well you got else. two yeah you got two this season that's true. one from the pass bar and one from the uh that bonus quest right but that was it so if you have more than one more than two exotics basically you were screwed. You couldn't go back to the kiosk. At least the, this is where the, I think it was the crypt arc is where you got them uh, right now, but now they're going to have like a permanent place. I like it. I, I They had yeah. me, they had me. I, what I like about this, what caught my eye is the pinnacles. These pinnacles, it took forever to get. Now people can just go here and get them. <sighs> Come on, man. Does that really sound like a good idea? I, I mean, I mean, I worked hard for those pinnacles, man. Yeah, exactly. Now some motherfuckers are just gonna go and like shell out like 
I don't know, some absurd amount of glimmer and some shards and I guess if they want cipher. And... Hopefully hopefully it's expensive and prohibitively expensive where they have to really grind to get the glimmer or whatever else shards or whatever else they need, but um I, I don't know. I'm I'm kinda mixed on that one, but I don't know. Hmm. We'll see, I guess, yeah. once we look at it. Yeah. Well the other side of it too is um they're also introducing a new currency because they're getting rid of a bunch of them, so they have to replace it with something. Of course. And it <laughs> it's called the spoils of conquest oh, man. which can yeah so um it's only basically you can use it to get um like exotics that were raid from raids and things like that so so yeah you need some of that in order to probably get like an anarchy terabah uh acreus that kind of thing yeah so so get that shit now if you can Although, um, by the time you're listening to this, you don't have much time to get the shit, so better get on it. So, aside from that, um, exotic ciphers. They were limited in nature, and while you can expect one to be available as part of the season pass, Xur will also offer a quest to earn one exotic cipher on a weekly basis. I like that. That answered my question. Yeah, but I still think it's utter and complete bullshit that people can just go and buy this shit. It's old exotics, keep in mind. You I know, don't care, you know, man. maybe maybe you didn't play a lot and you didn't get that uh no no pun intended, you didn't get that uh that RNG uh, gator. Uh you know, drops Ooh. and that, like Teraba, I mean, it took me for, I mean, okay, it didn't take me forever to get Teraba, but there's people out there who don't have Teraba and uh don't have time to run the, the raid a million times. So in that case, I think it's good. I don't know. Like I said, we'll but, see. It, I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's an attempt to make the game a little more approachable for casual people. That, like, for I say, me, it, it I, sound, it, I'm but, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, it, it kind of sounds to me like this might be uh, kind of geared towards maybe somebody like myself. You know, somebody that hasn't played in a long time and they want to come back in and maybe uh, get some exotics that they didn't have the RNG to get before. Or... Yeah, it's true. I, I, I think this whole, the way they've been, uh, you know, with the launch trailers, of just a load of launch trailers and stuff. And even when I was talking about the Vidoc last week, it seemed more promotional. So maybe this is their big push to uh to get those new players in the door and and get hooked on destiny like we are and uh they they're definitely making it easier for people that's easy that's for sure yeah so i mean maybe what they do what they're doing is the barrier to entry is lower so what they're doing is you know maybe if for example say rpg say you want to get something called the anarchy and it's like this kick-ass grenade launcher um say you can shell out a thousand legendary shards and a cipher and this kind of thing. So it's going to take you a couple weeks maybe to get a thousand shards and things like that, possibly because you're getting back into it and that. Whereas somebody like myself, where I'm sitting on a couple thousand shards, if I just didn't have the RNG to get it, maybe then yeah. I can just buy it and that kind of thing. Maybe I like deemed I put in my time, that kind of thing. So like, a, collect on it. like a collector's type of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Okay, I'm a convert. You sold me. Way to go. All right. So, uh, Crucible update here. So, Trials of Osiris uh, requirement will be 1210. They added Adept Weapons, which they've already talked about, and Weapon Mods for Flawless, uh, when you go Flawless there. Additional information is in basically the previous TWABs. So, um, some shit that they added with physics boundaries with maps, but you know, who cares? Um, sorry. No, uh, ah. I think, yeah, sorry. My bad. No, no worries. Um, so player identity, uh, they're doing a bunch of changes to how your player looks and things like that. So, um, the one thing that I noticed that everybody on Reddit's all excited about is the login screens are dark. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah I like that too. Yeah. It's funny. My wife, um, I'll always, like it, our house is usually kind of 
dark. So my wife will be sitting on the couch and I'm like playing. I turn on Destiny and she's just like talking to me. And then all of a sudden it goes to that one screen where it's like super bright. And she's like, what are they trying to do? Like burn out your eyeballs before you start playing the game? And I'm just like, well, I think they're just trying to make sure you're awake. So, uh, but yeah. So there's that. Uh, character creation. Um, they're changing it from male and female to masculine and feminine. Um, I believe that hopefully that they're adding beards. I think that's the, the big hype and hope that everybody has. And... I mean, it's really just a bunch of random shit, honestly. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented online friends from showing up in their roster on Stadia for players with more than 100 friends. I don't even know if 100 people play on Stadia. <laughs> but don't don't pick on red solo cup <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not i'm not i mean I, no he was um he chimed in when i was talking about like getting a pc and i'm just like well i was like you know i'm i i do i did think about stadia for like a second and then i was just like well i was like one they have a low pl uh, low player population and then two it's a google who cancels shit on a whim yeah so i bet you're playing trials on that platform is a breeze oh well you probably play the same you know three people Pro probably know, seven games in a row yeah yeah that's just what i want to do i want to be farmed can you can, can you hook that up for me <laughs> yeah exactly um no i'm i'm sure there's more than seven people playing or more than 100 people playing but it's just it just seems to me like a low pair a low player population so um but again i mean in this blob i again there's not much i mean there's some sandbox changes here that they missed in the preview but okay so brace yourself dear listener travelers chosen they reduced the muzzle flash intensity that's a good thing i hate i, I use that oh, gun for it, it's sake, no man. no it, it's come terrible. on man come the, on the muzzle come flash on. is terrible Th this did not need to be even added to a twab i don't know it's a change they gotta mention it they don't have to, no, they, but they, they don't have to at all. So, uh, okay. They don't have to do it. I, I promise you, man. Point of the stag being raised to 1310. Who cares? I got point of the stag. It's a good boat. But why? And you know what? I don't care. It's 1310. I don't care if it's 1440. Whatever. <laughs> all right. I mean, for real, the only change. Okay. Okay. So I will say that amongst all the this shit that's in here and yeah, 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 yeah. nobody yeah, yeah, cares yeah. about yeah 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 say it yeah yeah so okay hunters i yes. apologize yes I, I i do love you guys um more than you know warlocks anyway so they increase the hunter's dodge by a few seconds so um so for example the tier four it was 22 seconds previously now it's 26 seconds. So it's roughly uh, maybe like a four second increase if it's, you know, if you can extrapolate it out. Suck it, hunters. So, uh, I'm sorry. What were we saying? Drafty's going to have words with you. Nolsey, dear God, is going to fucking <laughs> let you have it in your ear. I'm so, so happy to see this. In Crucible, <laughs> they're freaking dodging all the time, man. Especially people who really know how to use it effectively. It's crazy. Well, I think the issue really is from what was it? The old mods where they could put them on and get over 100. Uh, oh, just mobility, crazy. Yeah. And then they were just getting like insta dodge. Dude, there's like, I, all the time. I have a build on my hunter where I, I'm getting dodged like very quick. I mean, I don't know if it's like crap that crazy quick, but I mean, like half a half a minute, I already got my dodge back. And then, of course, I've got that chest piece that gives you two dodges. Uh, it's nice, man. I, I think I don't, I don't think a it, minute. Dude. this isn't going to. Well, then there's the yeah, yeah, there's the one that's like it dodge and then it like re like, you know, it gives you some energy back. And right. Yeah, it's it is substantial. I mean, mm, okay. it sucks because I, I think my second main is a hunter, but I think it was a great adjustment needed to be done. Bullshit. Bullshit. All right. Um, Anti-champion mods. 
Now, this got me excited. So amongst all the random shit about, hey, you know, we we reduce the muzzle flash on Travelers Chosen for the four people that use it. Um, the anti-champion mods. Anti-barrier rounds will now penetrate taken phalanxes shields. Yeah, buddy, about time. I thought they already did. Why not? Okay. Yeah. Hey, a fun fact for you guys, too. Um, the anti-barrier rounds, uh, if you're running Scourge of the Past, they actually will penetrate the shield on the... Uh, oh, the, oh, the boss? Not the uh, boss, but the um, the, the yeah. one fucking guys that you got to shoot in the, the chest in the back. The hy- Oh, okay, yeah, you're talking about the... Yeah, okay, never mind. I thought you meant the Hydras. No, I'm talking about Scourge. No, I'm talking about, yeah, you can actually, like, when they put up that uh, suppression bubble, right. yeah, you yeah. can actually shoot through that with okay. the anti-barrier mods. I found that out when I was uh, running nice. it with uh, this week, so. Nice. And um, all anti-champion mods have been shifted to armor. Thank you. Rather than taking up a weapon mod slot. Yes. How exciting is that? This was annoying, especially like the the, the one for pulse rifles. But I will mention they did have a mod, uh, a, uh, geez, I'm trying to think, the unstoppable mods for Pulse. They did have an armor mod already in place this, this season that you could put on your grips that would work for uh, any Pulse rifle. So mm-hmm. they've already been testing it, it sounds like, but now they can do it on any. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it, yep. it, it opens up an attachment for your weapon or a mod for your weapon. That, that's all it counts. Mm-hmm. So besides that, um, again, I mean, Bungie's releasing some uh, new merch. So if you want to buy some stuff, go do it. Um, probably if you're listening to this, you're not going to be able to hear this, but um, make sure to double check your rewards as well and uh, make sure that you claim all that shit because I didn't uh, realize that I didn't claim the uh, is it the emblem for doing the uh, Festival of the Lost? So, you know, uh, make sure you do that stuff. And besides that, that's pretty much everything from the TWAB. Now, aside from the TWAB, Luke Smith did put out a uh, small little insignificant little tweet. Um, did you say insignificant, Gator? Uh No. <laughs> uh, I don't think so at all. I think it was a great tweet. Yeah. So um, so in it, it says, well, okay, I think this is the edited version of it because I swear to God, when I saw it, it did not say this. I think it was changed. Uh, so in the revised version, he says, is there an end of the season event? We have a small event to close out the season of arrivals. We wanted it to be a surprise, but an email accidentally mentioned it. It's nothing too crazy. Just a little time to chill in the tower before the lights go out. See you soon. Now, in the one that I saw, it said Monday night uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Now, that's what I saw. Oh, that would be 7 7 p.m. Eastern, right? 7 p.m. Eastern. Exactly. Um, I've already talked to my wife and got it cleared with her. So I think we might do a family thing. So I'm hoping it's nothing too absurd that happens to the planets, um, like them blowing up and stuff. So, um, which I'm hoping to God happens. And so, yeah. So I think, um, weren't we trying to get something together? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Uh, I took a poll today in our discord and I, I was trying to figure out where our, where everybody was console wise or, or PC or platform, whatever. And it, we're pretty spread out, man. I mean, everybody, there's some, a lot of people on Xbox. There's a considerable amount on PS4 and there, there's even a lot on PS uh, or on PC. And I know other friends too, that are on PC. And I think what we've decided to do is we're going to, since we all can't be in the, all the same tower at the same time, because there's no cross play. Uh, I think what we're going to do is at 7 p.m. on Monday, that's 7 p.m. Eastern. Sorry to our uh, our European brothers and sisters, and of course, yeah, and our (laughs) and our Australian (laughs) Australian players out there too. 
Um, Canadian too. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, no, they're sweaty they're, spooks. They're part of us. They're they're in the same time zone, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, what we're gonna do is we're going to open up our general gaming channel one, and uh, as many as we can stuff in there. Anybody who wants to join that gaming channel, it's it's gaming channel one in our Discord, and just want to jump in and and talk and and we're probably just gonna hang out at the tower and just BS and see you know like we did with the Almighty crashing to Earth you know that live event. I think it's gonna be very similar. I think it might. I I I hope that it's something that's not gonna last for like three hours, like the Almighty or event can't. was. No. But well, if it's starting at seven o'clock, here's the way I see it. It starts at seven o'clock, or at least they've hinted. They haven't specifically said because Luke Smith wanted to make sure that it was kind of a surprise when it happened. He wanted to keep us guessing a little bit. So at seven o'clock, I'm going to be at the tower. Anybody is more than welcome to join me. Uh, I'll be on PC. I might jump to PS4 just so I can teabag Shocker. Hazel. Well, if Hazel uh, comes, I might I might want to teabag Hazel, so I might jump on PS4. I might be on both. I don't know. We'll see. And uh, we're going to hang out. So if you want to come and hang out and bullshit with us, like I said, come into our Discord and our, our gaming channel one, and I'll open it up as to how many, however many people we can hold in there. And we'll just uh, hang out together and talk about maybe what we see in the sky or what's going to happen. It was kind of neat. We kind of texted it to each other through the Discord last time. And I figured, you know, we need to we need to have the voice channel open this time, and we can all talk and catch up and and BS or whatever we want to do in there, you know. So uh, I might like, like try and jump on. Yeah, and I will yeah, I will sure. warn you, I might be recording a few things. So better be <laughs> recording it. Keep keep yeah, that in mind. I'll probably be streaming because I mean there might be some guys that are or girls in, in the Discord that are working or unable to. Yeah, you know, I would like to witness that too. You know, I might do that Definitely. too. That's a great Definitely. idea a great idea i'm sure we'll have several people that are streaming we got a lot of streamers yeah. in our in our discord too so yeah so um, it's just an open invitation anybody out there that they want to talk with us uh like i said join in one of our voice channels in our discord and uh you'll see there'll be people in there just hang out with us and we'll see how what's going to happen here my guess is i think the closer we get to nine o'clock the the better chance it's going to happen I hope it doesn't take two hours, but hey, we'll be amongst friends, just chilling. So it'll be a good time. And Wait. my get my guess is something's probably going to happen before they shut down the servers. Is my guess. So, so is this like a live event? Is is Galactus coming down? Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. This guy, I we don't Galactus know. Galactus confirmed. <laughs> is there that it? Go. Okay. Well, we'll yeah. find out. I mean, that's the great thing about live events. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, in, in the past live event, we saw flashes and and certain things in the sky that built up every day. But this is different. It's just something that's supposed to happen. I honestly think it's going to be like that Fortnite event. I think the lights are going to get shut out, and then we're all going to be kicked to orbit, and then not be able to log back in. I think that's what's going to mm-hmm. happen. Like that's we're gonna, what I think, too. We're going to see some kind of... Uh, it could be either... Because we have to download a little patch... At, at a certain time. You remember what time I said that patch was coming out? L- earlier in the day, they're going to have a patch that we have to download. And that's, I'm assuming that's probably for the live event. And we may even get a cutscene, um, like a all at once. Just everyone gets a cutscene, and that may be it. I, we don't know. That's the great thing about Bungie is they, don't, they won't tell us. They won't tell us what's going to happen. So anyway, open invitation. Anybody wants to join us, uh, I'll have all my great emotes. Or, I, or like I said, I might jump on PS4 just to... Just to pester Hazel if he happens to be in the tower. He'll probably block me, so we'll see. Um, Well, I was actually toying around with the idea of being on Titan or Io or one of those planets just to see what happens. I thought about that, too. But uh, it's said to be at the tower, or at least they hinted heavily that uh, we'll see in the tower when the lights go off. And he emphasized lights. So I don't know, man. I'm curious. Uh, I was going to bowl that night, and uh, I'm taking the night off. I'm not going to bowl. I'm... (laughs) <clears throat> I think I'm too sick to bowl. So uh hmm. <laughs> that's all right. There my team's used to me missing a, a night or two every so often, so I've been on a really bad slide lately. So <laughs> I need, I think I need a week off. Uh anyway, so we just want to mention that before we go, before we go that we are gonna do that. But uh I Hazel, if you don't mind, I want to mention these important dates because um I don't know if you had this in your in your notes, but the exact 
time that everything's going to be shut down. Uh, did you want to mention that? Do you want me to go over it? Or? I think I mentioned it last time. Uh, it well, was, what was it, it? 10 p.m., I think, Eastern time. Yep. Um, yeah, 10 p.m. Eastern time. And and it's going to be down for 14 hours. So basically until I think it's reset the next day. I think, it's, I think it's 12 noon the next day. It'll be 9, yeah, 12 9, noon 9, 9 a.m. Pacific. So we're on daylight savings. It's yep, off now. There so. we go. Our, res- our resets at 12 noon now guys and uh i think that's i think it's i you know i it i'm a little I'm excited i'm sorry i'm stumbling here but i'm a little excited i'm curious to see what's going to happen and uh yeah so and and they did mention 10 minutes before 10 9 50 eastern you will not be able to log in so i'm imagine they're mm-hmm. probably get preparing all the servers and starting to bleed people off slowly that's what they usually do and uh slowly kick people out so uh, make sure you don't log in like 950 thinking, hey, maybe I can catch a live event. You, you probably won't be able to log on. So keep that in mind. Uh, was there anything else, Hazel? I'm trying to look here. Um, was there anything else we needed? Us? I mean, pretty much everything there. Um, I mean, just to make sure that, you know. Um, oh, um, one thing um, that I found preposterous. Um, that, well, so storage requirements for beyond light <laughs> yeah um i mean typically we usually don't cover this shit but um for people that have a ps4 um we get fucked in the steel basically so um basically what we need is we need 171.68 gigabytes of open storage so they got you got 14 yeah. hours <laughs> Fuck. That means that you're gonna have to delete some shit before, probably. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I think there. what they're gonna do probably, and, and it's 186.2 by the way for PC. I think what they're gonna do is nobody they're gonna, cares about PC. Yeah, they do. You will soon. Um, <laughs> they they're what they're gonna do is they're probably gonna load the whole new game on, and then after they do that, then erase or take out or piece out the old game that's probably why you have to have that much available for the install but the actual size is isn't that big it's uh about 70 gigabytes for pc uh 70.78 for playstation 4 and 65 for the new new xbox series x so uh mm-hmm. playstation 5 is 72 70 also so um yeah they're not very big file sizes i think they're a lot smaller i mean <sighs> we're well over 100 gonna, uh, we're well over 100 already with the old yeah game. i was gonna say it seems seems like they're kind of challenging infinity ward there oh god no the no size of the download hold my beer no, nobody can uh <laughs> nobody can beat modern warfare those patches are enormous man my yeah. I, I i didn't delete the game but i think my my ps4 is like please get this game off if you're not gonna play it <laughs> so they're yeah. gonna shoot through the roof oh it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna sing it's gonna hum it's not gonna be happy uh monday night so we'll see uh anything yeah. else Hazel? i'm toying around with the idea of deleting uh i'm just toying around with the idea of deleting um destiny 2 after the live event and then just letting no. it just install no they they explicitly said do not delete the old game i think something has to be drawn from it i don't know what kind of code or something but oh. they, they said yeah. specific, they said they said do not delete damn it hazel do not delete <laughs> Do not delete your old Dude, game. Dude, that's a segue right there, ladies no. and gentlemen. I do, set him up, and he took full advantage of it. Do yeah. not delete the old game. Don't do it. They, they Don't ex- do it. They explicitly do told not. us, you'll mess up your install. Don't do it. Just let it. I know it's going to take forever on PS4, guys. I know it is. Just let it happen. Just sit back and let it go, man. And, yep, just and, make sure you got room for it, buddy. And put a big fan on your PS4. You might want to bring some auxiliary fans in. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's okay. Uh, It'll just take flight. It's all right. Did you seriously so, not know that? You were setting me up, weren't you? I was, man. Okay. I'm glad to know that you... Son of a bitch. ...took full advantage of I took the bait. Damn it. Look at that. Oh, Hazel. All right. That's it for the TWAB. All right, guys. It, it's it's fun time now. We're going we're gonna to let our hair down. Oops. I mean, we're going to have some fun now. Right after this. I get to grow hair? <laughs> Sorry, Hazel. Right after this. Hey, girl. 
Guardians. Would you like to send us a question for the show? Well, there's four ways to do it. Number one, join our Discord server. There's a join link in our show notes. We have some great gamers in there, by the way. And you can just lurk or hang out or jump right in and talk with us. There's also a channel labeled Podcast Questions where you can type in your question for the show. You can also email us at guardiandowncast at gmail.com or... We also tweet out almost every week about our upcoming show guest, and you can respond there with your questions at guardian underscore D underscore cast is our Twitter handle. Finally, you can send us a voicemail with your questions at speakpipe.com slash guardian downcast. Remember, that's all one word, and we'll play it on the show for you guys. Speakpipe is honestly my favorite thing. But anyway, thank you for all you guys do and toddles. And later, Guardian. All right, boys and girls, it's that time of the week. This is where we get our questions from our Discord and our speak pipe. You know, we try to answer them the best we can, and some of them are actually addressed to our guest as well. And I want to start off our first one with a speak pipe. So here we go. Hey, all. Scum Death here. Here's a question from the main man, RPG Magnet. Was it just RPGs that were magnetized to your head, or was other artillery um, coming your way? Love the show, guys. Bye. <laughs> oh, great question. Uh, <laughs> did, were you guys able to listen to it? Yeah. No, I'm actually having some issues with that. So he basically just asked, he's like, was it just RPGs? Uh, it's a scum death. And he said, um, he's like, was it just RPGs that were magnetized to your head or any other artillery? No, it was it was anything that is explosive and dangerous. <laughs> IEDs, grenades. You name it, huh? Yeah. Damn. Damn. Good que- great question, now, Uncle Scum Death. I'm glad you asked that one because uh, it sounds like you guys have history. Oh yeah, Scum Death and I we we've been good buddies for a while now. Nice. Actually, uh, I uh, we have in the last class I, I'm instructing for. They've since graduated, but uh, they had actually had a British guy that he's he's come over to the United States and he's uh, he went through the school to be a police officer here. I actually uh, told him about scum death and and everything. He, if if he goes back over to the UK, he might go see uh, scum death band. Oh, that's outstanding! Awesome. Outstanding! All right, Hazel, let's uh, let's dip into our. I, I gotta I gotta mention again, man. The Discord has come through. We've got questions. Not out of every whatever. Uh, we've got questions from all over. I mean, uh, I'm just amazed. Our, our community really comes together when it comes to asking questions. So uh, mm-hmm. I'll give you the honor, sir. You pick the first one. Yeah. Well, sir, uh, real quick, I just want to say that, I mean, not only did they step up, but, um, I mean, it, it's a testament to you yourself, man, RPG, just because, I mean, these questions are to you. So people know you. Yeah. And yeah. that's awesome, I think. So absolutely. All right. So first question here for you is from our, uh, from sweaty spooks question for RPG magnet 34. I want to hear about foods. Do you happen to have a favorite dish that originates from another place? Example, mine would be either some UK English curry dish or chicken pad thai. There's a really good rice in uh, Afghanistan. I don't know exactly how they make it. But, saffron? Uh, saffron? I, I don't know. Uh, we used to get it off a vendor mm. uh, just on the street, and it had, like, little berries in it. So I'm not real sure of the cleanliness of it because we would buy <laughs> bottles of pop, and the bottle would actually be open, but we'd still drink it. Oh, no shit. <laughs> but uh, oh, that, I, I like uh, – I'm, I'm a real big fan of German food, too. Uh, yeah. Like bratwurst mm. and Jaeger schnitzel nice. and German beer, of course. Deal, man. Nice. Great question. Well, he he does he does follow it up and say if that question doesn't work, then hit me up with your favorite dish in general. But I think you covered it. Cool. Yeah. Nicely done, man. All right. I have one from Chubby Wizard here. Always has great questions. Question for the show. If there is a chance during Beyond Light to kill Aldrin, knowing his ghost will res him, will you kill him or forgive him? I think he has suffered enough, and you know the whole memory wipe thing. Do you, I don't know how much you know about Aldrin. He is coming back. He did uh, kill Cade. Spoiler. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say that's the guy. 
from the <laughs> the, the queen's brother. Yep. Correct. Yep. Brother. Okay. Yep. yep. He's yep. the crow. Yep. The crow. Yep. What do you think? He'd shoot him. You can hear it in his voice. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as, as many times as I've died playing that game, I figure he could at least die one time and be okay. <laughs> Maybe maybe shoot him, well, let his ghost res him, and then grab him by the hand and pick him up, right? Yeah. Well, he right. did like, die, th- you could argue. There, ha- yes. How's it feel? True. <laughs> True. I, I hope you get kicked from the server while you're... <laughs> right after you get killed. I like it. Hazel, what do you think, man? Shit. <laughs> Sorry, I was taking a drink. <laughs> Sorry. That was great. Um, I don't think I would shoot him. As much as I'd want to, I don't think I would just because he doesn't remember. So it'd be like shooting somebody for something that they didn't know. Let's keep in mind also that he was possessed by an, uh, an Ahamkara. So let's keep that in mind that he was being fooled, uh, during that story when he, when he did shoot, Mm. he would, dude, you could see his whole eyes were black. He was possessed, Mm. man. All right, dude's fired. I'm gonna leave. Uh, I'm gonna, I, leave, I'm gonna I, leave it alone. <laughs> I, I mean, he was. Uh, I mean, there's some there's some questionable brother sister activities. Is I mean, some relations there that would make me question things. I guess you know. It, has he always been a dick since Destiny One? Yes, he's definitely been pompous. That's for damn sure. But uh, I don't know. Bygones are bygones, and he can't remember it anyway. So what what use would it be for me to shoot him? But I might, I might do what uh, RPG said. I might just shoot him and then just let him res and then pick him up. And say, all right, we're even. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right. What we got next? All right. Uh, question for the main man at RPG Magnet 34. Do you prefer the military or the police force? Uncle Scum Death. I prefer one over the other for different reasons. I uh, I really miss the friendships I had with the military. You get very close to the the guys that you're overseas with. Obviously, uh, I still maintain contact with them today. On the police side, uh, I love my job, uh, helping people, and they've they've given me the opportunity to become a sniper and uh, to get on the SWAT team. And uh, it's extremely hard to do that in the military. And the, the police department I work for has actually provided me the opportunity to do that. So, Nice. Congratulations, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll get the next one here. This is from Chris3711. Question for the show. What is Mrs. Hazelnut's side hustle and what are our, what are intended hours? Hmm. I think I guess that's for Hazel, right? Or Mrs. Hazelnut. <laughs> so, well, is yeah, she is I she can. sitting there next so, to you? Um, this is in regard. Uh, she's she's passed out. Okay, so. never mind. Um, no, so uh, no, but she's a uh, life coach. So she was um, looking at getting a computer for her, and um, her hours are going to be kind of all over. I mean, sometimes during the day, sometimes at night. Um, not too late at night. I mean, I mean, she may have a client at like 9 PM, something like that. Maybe, maybe a little later, but you know, Hmm. so I'll still be able to game. Nice. Can't wait, man. Uh, Cannot wait. Are you getting that winner? Hot take. Are you getting that PC before beyond light? Probably not. Right. No. Damn it. All right. (laughs) It's okay. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out if I'm getting like a laptop or if I'm getting a. Uh, I I a would desktop. seriously get a. My opinion, I would get a desktop because you can upgrade it. It's really hard to upgrade a laptop. I've talked to a lot of buddies of mine who know a lot about computers, and they're really hard to upgrade. Yeah, I just don't want to. I just don't want to have to buy a desk and. I know. I I've had several shit, laptops. Man. They're the they're great to have, man. Trust me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, time we'll will see. tell. Yep. We'll see. All right. Uh, I asked that one, so it's your turn. All right. So I like this one. From Uncle Scum Death. What is your most watched YouTube channel? <laughs> Great question. What do, what do you got I mean, there? What do you got, RPG? I mean, obviously, I watch mine all the time. Uh, I watch my own video. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me, uh, I, I'm a real big fan of Game Rank. I don't know if you guys have... 
I know Game Rant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with yeah. Jake Baldino. Yeah, yeah. I, I love yeah. that channel. Because there's a lot of other gaming channels. I'm not a big fan of Gaming Bolt. I feel like they're, I don't know, just kind of fake. Check out Ryan George. He he actually got started on Screen Rant, which I don't like them, but he has these videos called Pitch Meetings. Uh, he's probably done a pitch meeting for your favorite movie. So just look up Screen Rant, Pitch Meetings, your favorite movie. And they are freaking hilarious. So I, th- I think his most recent one he did on Screen Rant was the uh, last Twilight movie. Hmm. And it's basically just him in a pitch meeting. He's the screenwriter and the executive guy talking to himself back and forth. Oh, wow. That sounds fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What is, uh, what's yours, Hazel? I'm curious. Oh, so, um, I just pulled up my YouTube just to see what's there. I know what, uh, my most watch right now is, and it's, um, so something about me is that I'm so in this break with destiny. I've actually gotten back into playing chess. So wow. yeah, I fucking love it. Uh, and there's a guy that I've been watching. His name is Gotham chess. He even streams on Twitch. Yeah. I've heard him. Yeah. He's sarcastic as shit and he's awesome. But, uh, yeah. So, um, I've actually, um, subbed to him on Twitch even. And I mean, because of him, I'm over, well, I've just started like playing like ranked games and I'm over 1150 now. So, I mean, it's out of 3000, but still, you know, 1150 for not playing for years on end. And Mm -hmm. now I'm back in and it's fun just to, I, I made a guy resign in 16 moves and I was just (laughs) like, Oh yeah, suck it. That would be me. So yeah, I don't know what my rank is, but, uh, what, what, what I'm just, just a side question here. Where, what platform are you playing it on this game? Uh, What, what, what game is it? On just chess, um, chess.com chess.com. I, I've been wanting to get back into chess. My, me and my dad used to play as a kid. Oh. Uh, when I was a kid, I'd play every night before I went to bed. I love chess. And I I've actually have a Destiny chess set. And uh, I got it. Nice. <clears throat> snuck it in at Christmas time as a gift to myself. <laughs> my wife doesn't yeah. listen anymore. She won't hear it. Um, <laughs> chess.com. All right. Yeah, Good. they have an app. And uh, I yeah. love it. I used, yeah, to play chess. Sure, man. I used to play chess with friends, and it's okay. But um, does, does this chess.com, can you... Can you really customize your pieces and stuff? Well, I mean, with it, you can actually, like, so out of the games that I've played, you can actually go in and see, like, they do, like, a game report. So it tells you, like, how many, like, excellent moves you've done or you did in the oh, game. Oh, wow. I like that. If you made a mistake, what a blunder was, nice. things like this. And then you can go back and try to correct your blunders against the system and that kind of thing. I so I I'm rusty as hell, but I definitely want to jump back in. As I, it's so much fun. I just love chess, man. Always have. And there's been yeah. a big. Re- I just saw news stories. Been been a big resurgence because of of the COVID stuff. A lot of mm-hmm. people are playing chess now, so that's awesome, man. Yeah, for sure. And um, you know, if you, I don't know exactly how you find somebody, but um, I have no clue. You know, if you anybody out there is looking at getting back into chess or playing chess currently, look me up. I'm Hazel Nutter, and all it's right. all H A Z E L N U T T E R. Cool, cool deal, man. Uh, okay, YouTube channels. Um, I gotta pick three because it depends what you want to watch. If it comes to Destiny. Just Destiny news and, and what's going on. You can't beat the good old Astacross. I love his videos. He's snarky and he I just like the way he presents stuff. He's like a good old Southern boy and he uh his comments and he's just very I like the I like the way he, he presents himself. If it comes down to Crucible, I like Patty Cakes game gaming. He's had some really great videos out lately and I posted a few in our Discord. And then finally if it comes to tech, it's Review Tech USA. I watch this guy's stuff all the time, and he's he's uh, a thirty something and uh, makes fun of his weight and stuff, and and just really entertaining guy. So uh, that was a great question. When I got that question, I I was searching. So uh, nice. Okay, so it's my turn. I'm gonna go with jealous. Question for the show. Hang in there. It's a long one. Bungie removes upscaling. So whatever the event, mission, raid, etc. difficulty is, it stays that. 
So if you select 750 power, all the enemies will be that scale. But if you die in a no respawn zone, consumed by the darkness, in other words, your character is permadeath, and everything you have equipped and have in inventory or extra armor or gun slots is deleted, and you have to make a new character. Holy shit. Uh, the payouts will be worth it, so it's guaranteed you will increase light, so you can play the next higher level until max light is hit. You can't farm lower levels to get higher gear. 750 will pay out levels to get uh, you to that example 850 level. This way, people can't just farm weak enemies for gear. Would you play this method? What's that? What's that sound like to you, RPG? Did you did you get the whole question? It was quite long. I think I do. I think I got it. Yeah, and no, I would not play that. <laughs> that's that's. I, I, listen, I, I'm the type. If I like uh, Uncharted Four. I played that shit on easy. I like the story. I don't want to get frustrated and break another controller. So just to avoid that whole situation, I'm going to play it on easy. I don't care. Whatever. I'm the same way. I, dude. I do. I do enough difficult shit in my life that exactly. I don't need to worry about throwing my controller through my TV. So exactly. Yeah. That's why I have four controllers in my office. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm the same way, dude. I, I want to know the story more than, you know, if I want to go back and play it later, then fine. But man, I'm sorry, jealous. That uh, the payout may be great, but you got to delete your character and start over. That's a little harsh, man. That's too harsh for me. I wouldn't do it. So, uh, Hazel, I'm curious what you have to say here. Well, um, fun fact for you guys is that actually at the end of D1, that was actually a big thing where everybody started basically like they would delete a character. I remember that, and then they would go ahead and play through, and then they would do permadeath. That's right. So that's what everybody was doing. I did it even, and I... How far did you go? I I, I made it uh, pretty far. I mean, the campaign was pretty easy. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't until I was actually um, doing a raid, and it was Vault of Glass, and I died again. I Basically, I wasn't... Oh, I'm trying to think what it was. I think I overjumped. Uh, uh, those are the worst. With um oh what was it um the the boss at the end of Vault of Glass, now we still owned it but I still died, so I got my Vex Mythoclast another one, yeah. and um Scout uh, oh. uh Vision of Confluence, and then I had to delete everything. Wow, so that's that's brutal, man. Yeah, that takes was a fun, lot of, though, takes but... a lot of, I know, I know toward the end of destiny one, a lot of people were fine, finding more interesting ways to play. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but I would definitely do this. That's why God made warlocks. <sighs> All right. Next question. Uh, Hazel. <laughs> All right. Um, I may or may not be flipping you off right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stay professional. Uh, question for Anubis Falls. A uh, new guy in our clan and in the Discord. Might have missed this, but any updates on a mi on next season clan cast? You want to mention it, Hazel? You want me to? Uh, go for it, man. We are. We are going to do one the latter part of November. We, did, we were going to have it last week, but we decided, you know, let's everybody play the new content. I'm sure everyone will have ideas of what, you know, what they want to talk about and what they want to share and what they've done so far. So later in October, look for it. We're, we're, we're planning on having it. So hopefully we'll have a good turnout. And, uh, the more, the more, the merrier, you know, if you're in, in the guardian downcast clan, you're welcome. Whatever platform you're on, it doesn't matter. We'll be jumping in, uh, you know, our, our chat that we do in the clans and go from there. So yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, okay, my turn. All right, let's see. <laughs> uh, we got a question for Mrs. Hazelnut here. Thank God she's passed out. Uh, question <clears throat> for Hazel. I have talked about a PC actually sharing one. Me for my side hustle and Hazel for gaming. Do you all think this would work? What do you think, uh, RPG? You ever shared a computer with your wife? Uh, and actually, no, I don't, I don't currently have a, uh, home PC or laptop. Uh, would you I have a work computer that I take with me in my car and my desk? And that's actually where I do all my, 
or did all my editing and uh, everything for my YouTube videos. That's why it's pretty choppy. But I mean, I just working with what I working with what I got. So yeah, all right. You think it'll work for Hazel? What do you think? Yeah, I think it'll work. I think if they're That'd organized, be good. If they they got to be, or- be organized about it. I think they could. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess the man to, to ask is Hazel. What do you think, Hazel? You think it'll work? I don't know, but I'm willing to give it a shot and find out. <laughs> Shit. I think that's the only answer to give, right? <laughs> I'm just reading the next <laughs> question under it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ask this one or you want me to? <laughs> um, you can. This is from Chris3711. He says, question for the show. If Hazelnut agrees to buy a PC... Gator, will you agree to play only Warzone for one week straight? I will say this on the show right now. Yes, I will not like it, but I will play Warzone for one week straight and no Destiny. If Hazel buys a PC. There you go. (laughs) That's how badly I want him to join me on PC. Pathetic. (laughs) All right. Now your turn. We We got a few more here. All right. So we have a lot of good questions. We do. And I want to get through a lot of them this year, this week. I, I purposely wanted to make sure we had time this time around. So yeah, it's a good thing that Bungie went light on the twab. Thank you, Bungie. Masters. Um, question from Mazanis. Stasis is dark and solar is light and they are elemental opposites. What do you think would be the darkness elemental opposites of arc and void? Do you think they will continue that trend with the other darkness elements in the future? What do you think, RPG? Stasis, kind of a lot. stasis so, is like like icy. It's like an ice. So Stop. the the, the opposite the opposite of void, right? What is I the would say? Mm. <laughs> I'm to uh, think. Yeah, that's tough. I see opposite I arc, opposite arc would. Think- I'm just trying to think your episode of arc. It'd be like a rock, I guess. I don't know. Well, that was what I was thinking, right? I mean, like grounded. Yeah, grounded, something that's yeah. non-conductible. So what? We'll call it mud. <laughs> yeah. Shoot mud at well, everybody. <laughs> well, wait a minute now, because so stasis is like stopping things or slowing things down. Okay. Solar is about basically like moving forward and that kind of thing. So maybe. So what about arc? What what would arc be considered? Like if you look at it one step further regarding the the ability. Ever spreading? Uh well I would um, think sp- speeding speeding up. Speeding up. Yeah. Powering up. Hmm. Hmm. That's a tough one, man. That's a tough question, Exonus. I'm sorry. Azonis. Yeah, I said it right. Make note. I know. Um I was just trying to think because, I mean, like to me, void, I mean, is, you know, something like kind of just ethereal. It's like, it's, it's like blackness. Yeah. I mean, and I would imagine like the opposite of that would be something like you're summoning like blocks, I guess, from, from the sky to fall down on stuff. Job confuses I hell. They, I don't know how the hell they'd pull that off. But I don't that, know. That would be pretty cool. Blocks. From, um, okay. Yeah, but I would say ground maybe would be the opposite of arc, just if we're taking yeah. it at face value, though. Like I'm trying to think of one that they maybe the one of the earth elements. I don't know. It's that's tough, man. Um, opposite of arc. Yeah, I was trying to find poison. I was trying to work. I know. I tried. I tried. I, I tried yeah, I tried to also. It's just. <laughs> I mean, decay could be the opposite of arc because arc could be like. Spreading and growing and energizing and decay, decay could be, would be the be rotting to draw yeah, it back to to de- 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 degrade. Um, yeah, maybe that would be the opposite of arc. Ooh, that would be fucking a, a, sexy. A poison shit. class. Okay, I could buy that. I always thought there'd be a poison or a decay class, but the opposite of void though. That's the hard one, man. Uh, I don't think we'll have to think on that one, guys. <laughs> we, we need to we need to give our idea to blue and green. Yes. And, um, Go like, hey, um, we had this question. These are our answers. Let us know that we're wrong. And uh, yeah, yeah, good part. Yeah, Great okay. Question was it? It was a tough question. I, I, uh, I can't, I can't take that one out. I want to leave it for uh, 
for our lore hunters out there. See what they think. All right, I have another one from Uncle Scumdeath. I whilst like it. whilst fighting with the misses this morning, I put my neck out and can't move my head. When was the last time you came off worse than your other half? RPG, you got any you got an answer for this? Uh, yeah, let me let me read it, read it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Oh, while he's reading it, I can go. Go for it. I always end up on the worst whenever we're like playing around and stuff like that because i always end up getting hit in the junk or i end up like getting like hit in the throat or something like that she just like like her instincts are just to like just immobilize me so yeah it's lovely yes for for me it's my wife always ends up on the the worst end of our exchanges uh even when I'm sleeping, because uh, I've been known to kind of thrash in my sleep, and she'll check on me to make sure I'm okay, and oh, yeah. she kind of gets hit in the face, and then we have oh, to explain man. it to her family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. I'm a thrasher, <laughs> too. I get it, man. Uh, if my wife and I, well, you know about the wooden spoon incident. I was going to say that, yeah. We were, uh, you know, I got the worst end of that, because it was embarrassing as hell. But if my wife and I were physically wrestling around, just goofing off, my dogs feed on that. I have two pretty yeah. good sized dogs. They're good 60, 80 pounds each. And they have freaking nails on them that can just cut through metal. I mean, it's crazy. We even trim them down. And they, they're still sharp as hell. And my one dog uses her uses her front paws like hands. She grabs stuff. It's amazing watching her do stuff. I've seen her jump on a six-foot privacy fence. Hold on. Look over, check out what's going on above the fence, and jump down like a freaking gazelle. It's just crazy. Uh, I would, I would be, I would come out on the bad side because what happened is I'd be wrestling with my wife, and the dogs would come over and start wrestling with me, and I'd get all scratched up, and I'd have band aids all over my arms, and my customer would ask, "What the hell happened to your arms?" I'm like my dogs. So yeah, that's that's my answer. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Hey, RPG, is there a question you want to ask, by chance? Hey, you see one in there? Uh, from Uncle Scum Death. Okay. Ooh. Which position do you sleep in? Ooh. Well, you mentioned that you thrash in your bed when you sleep. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm guessing you're... Go ahead, I'll let you answer it. Well, I, I like to think that I, I don't, but... <laughs> don't know what my wife says. I, I do, Your but, wife has other opinions. Yeah, I... I go to sleep on my left side. I'm, I'm a side sleeper. Left side. I'm trying to think. Okay. Hazel, what about you? Uh, um, no, I'm curious here. Okay. So you said your left side. Mm-hmm. Is it closest to the door or further away from the door? <laughs> Good question. Further. Yeah. further from the door. Okay. Why? Is you, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I got to ask the same question to you, Hazel. Is your wife closer to the door or farther from the door? She's farther from the door. So uh, I'm on my right side facing the door. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. In, in our old house, I was closer to the door. In this one, she's close to the door. Every house okay. I've ever owned, my wife is closest to the door. I don't know why. You know, when you first move into your house or you get a new bed or whatever, that position, that side of the bed you pick is a really crucial pick because that's going to be your yeah. side forever yep. till your death. It's funny exactly. to say that because I didn't have a choice. <laughs> she picked her side and you were done. No, it wasn't even that. My wife actually said to me, she's like, okay, well, that side's closer to the door. So you're sleeping there. Right. I'm like, oh, okay. See, my wife tried that shit. Didn't work. I've, I've, <laughs> I've I've always been on the right side of the bed, and I'm a side sleeper as well. And I do thrash every now and then because I've I've uh, my wife has elbowed me before where I've slapped her in the face from turning. Yeah, I'm a side to side sleeper, mm-hmm. and uh, I start on my right. I start my wife's on my on the right side of the bed, so I start and spoon on my left side, but my ribs get uncomfortable for some reason. Probably because I lean in my chair on that side. Yeah, so. I'll I'll do that just to comfort her for the night and let her know I'm in bed. I'm in bed for the night, and then I I sleep mainly on my right side. I have a fan and everything, so it, I've always been the kind of person that has to have a fan on at night. It's weird. Yeah, my wife I love she she a fan on. 
my wife's like, don't turn the fan on my throat. I'm like, really? What is up with the fan and wives and the fans? I don't understand it. But uh, I'm sure they're probably thinking what's up with their husbands and the fan. But. I don't know. It just I've, I've always had. No, I'm not going to say that because you'll sin will tape it. I've always had a fan in my yes. face. No, I've always had a fan. <laughs> I've always had a fan on my face when I've I've. What if it How like if could I would well, be taken bad because I could say it a different way. Uh, if I was at the beach as what? a kid, I would always be the one who slept with my face facing the wall right where the air conditioner is. I'd always love having that fan and I just I can't explain it. And you're not going to get me to state it a different way. So uh, good question. Uncle scum. has got some good ones, man. Good questions. Used right now. Are you confused RPG? What's that? Are you confused too? What the hell was he gonna say? Uh, I think so. Lost. Um, blowing in your face. If that was your. No. He no. likes air no. in his face. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. No. Uh, okay. All right, I got one. All right. This is from Fluffy Fingers. Good to hear from you, bud. What is the one dish that your parents or grandparents made at you as a kid that you totally hated to eat? My single mother seemed to lose t- a taste for any spice as she aged, so our meals became more and more bland as time went on, which is maybe why I put Thai chili peppers in on every meal. Holy shit. Uh, however, her lasagna has ruined lasagna for me for the past 38 years. Hard pass on any and all lasagna. That's too bad, man. Which is funny for someone who loves almost all other pasta dishes. So one dish that our parents or grandparents made as kids that you totally hated to eat. Yeah, I'm actually right on board with Fluffy. It's it's lasagna for me. Really? I oh yeah. I I'm I do not like ricotta cheese. So I guess the stuffed shells and stuff would go with that too. But lasagna is the first thing that comes to mind. I, I do not like ricotta cheese at all. There's really not much taste to it. That's for sure. Yeah, that is true. It just it kind of looks pukey to me. So that's. As a kid, I saw it the one time. I thought it puke, and I just never been able to get past it. I think you just ruined ricotta cheese for me. By the way. <laughs> Lasagna for the rest of your life. <laughs> what about you, Hazel? Anything that your uh, parents or grandparents made that you totally hated to eat? Not really. Um, I'm just trying to think. I mean, my mom's idea of cooking was picking up a phone and ordering a pizza. So... She didn't, I mean, aside from, I mean, she would cook occasionally, but if she cooked, it was going to be like, she was trying to feed like the neighborhood. She'd do like roast and potatoes and that kind of thing. So, I mean, and my dad, I mean, he would cook too, but my dad just was a good cook too. So I, there wasn't really anything that I would say that they did. I mean, now I will say this though. My dad put garlic salt on everything and I can't eat garlic salt on anything these days. Yeah, my wife my wife puts garlic on everything. Well, garlic is okay. Garlic salt though um, on everything. She does that's different. She does that too. Um I'm sorry guys, I can't think of anything. I am a southern boy and I had a grandma and my mom that made the best food. And only thing I can think of is my dad likes livers. And my mom mm. made it one night and I was like, nope. That and beets. I can't touch a beet. Oh, I love I, beets. I can't. The taste, it's too earthy. It's like dirt. I can't I can't do it. So maybe beets would be my answer. But my mom and my grandmother, they make the best food. It's just southern comfort food. And every Christmas, Thanksgiving, I look so forward to going over because I know my mom's going to – she's going to butt – she's going to kill it. She does it every year. Right. Dwight Schrute would be very disappointed in you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dwight. <laughs> oh, well done. Great well question. Done. All right. Our Let's, uh, how about one more each, you think? Oh, okay. I guess. No, 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 no. Two more each. Yeah. There's some, there's no, some good we'll ones. Do, we'll do one more each. I guess. Okay. Okay. So question from Jealous. Question for the show. What if the pyramids pull an exec, uh, execute order 66 on us? And our ghosts leave us and try to stop us at the end of Beyond Light. I know my answer already, but uh, I'll go last. What do you think, RPG? The, um, I'm thinking now. 
Yeah. That'd be kind of a good story going by there's what's resing everybody. So so if you don't have your ghost, you can't res. Wow. That's a dark story. That's yeah. fucking that's fucking dark, man. <laughs> oh yeah. God, I hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, uh no, I would not like that. I don't like that I don't like that, <laughs> that reality at all, jealous. No. No thank you. Okay, Hazel, so got- Hazel. Yeah, I got a no. That's a a no for me, dog. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And RPG is like the jury's still out, I think. So for me, um, what what would I think of that? I think that would make me take off the next day because I would have to see that. I I got it. I would have to take off on Tuesday because I, I would have to find out what happened next. Wow. God, that's dark. It's beautiful. Right. I, I love dark shit. That would be fucking fantastic. That would be interesting. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, last question of the night. RPG gets one too. Okay. Per- well, okay, RPG, you pick the next one. Uh, so this is from Jealous. Have you ever been a sandbagger before? If so, what for and what was the reason? No, I have not been a sandbagger. <laughs> and I actually yell at people at the academy for sandbagging. <laughs> nice. Uh, wow. Great. Uh, no, I haven't been a sandbagger either. Huh. Gator, what about you? No, even though War, no, even though War Cry always calls me a sandbagger, I, I go big or go home when it comes to Crucible. I'm, all, I'm 110% every time I play. I never hold back. So uh, I don't know where that term comes from, but it's not part of my vocabulary. So uh, I look forward to uh, having Warcry on on that clan cast and finding out. Nah, he'd be too drunk to listen anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he'd probably pass out by the time we get to questions. <laughs> 20 deep. Yeah, he'd be 20 in. Uh, God, we got some great questions here. I feel like I need to ask this one from Sweaty Spooks. Question for the show. Going forward into Beyond Light, would you think we can expect to see more double reward nightfalls? Or do you think we are only seeing them as a method of getting ready for Beyond Light? I myself would love to see this become a thing, perhaps on some sort of rotator list. What do you think, RPG? They have a, they have right now at the end of the season, they've got it where you get double rewards on, a, on the big nightfalls, the hard ones. Yeah. Actually on all of them. And uh, it's been great. You can stock up and farm materials and stuff. What do you, th- you think they should do this into the next season or what? Yeah, I mean, I haven't done it. And uh, just basically from what you've told me is what my experience with it. But I feel like you can't really take that away at this point. I don't think it would be fair to everybody. Yeah, Bungie's always been so stingy on rewards sometimes. And uh, I agree. I think, they sh- I think we should get more rewards because I hate doing strikes because there's really no yeah. reason to do them. I mean – get to the end you get a bunch of tokens which by the way we can't use for crap anymore uh and you know and you get some blue gear usually um thanks i'm glad i finished that that strike <laughs> and you're doing three strikes for what a one piece of pinnacle gear right so yeah give us some more rewards Bungie. especially if we're doing a, a difficult like over a just a regular nightfall if we get into like an adept or, or even heroic or even a master nightfall uh those are fun to do yeah, give us give us double rewards. I'm just like those let those be the rewards we get going forward. What do you think, Hazel? It's a good thing we don't have like video because come on now. It's huh? Bungie. What? I'm I'm just looking like incredulously at you that you picked this question of all the good questions that we have to end on. Because you know damn good and well that this shit is only they only did this as a stopgap to keep people playing. I I agree. Dude, this they shit is fucking gone. As soon as you know the reset happens on Tuesday, yeah, this is gone. You know damn good and well we ain't gonna ever <laughs> see this again unless there's something, some glitch, you know, with air quotes in the air when it happens, and then people are gonna flock to doing it just like before. You know what? One more question for each of us. We got so many questions here. <laughs> <laughs> After me calling him out, he's like, "No, oh, no, oh, I'm, oh, no, I just, I, no, I just can't believe we've got so many more questions in here." Let's go one more question each. All right, RPG, you get another pick. If I use stasis to freeze an enemy, 
and the hit them with Jotun. Will it thaw them or kill them? Uh, I I mean, I would think it would neutralize the the stasis, right? Stasis freeze? I yeah. hope. If I if if, so if solar cool. is the opposite of stasis, we're assuming that. So what do you think, RPG? Yeah, I'm I'm in agreement with you there. Would be cool. Yeah. All right, Hazel, let's pick one more. So all right, I gotta go with this one. <laughs> oh shit. What? No, go ahead. So question from Jealous. So next week we have incredible franchises releasing blockbusters. Destiny 2, Beyond Light, Call of Duty, Cold War, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, which he forgot. Uh, I think it's a blessing, but a curse, because both, or well, all, are expected to be good, and people will be playing them and have to split hairs to play both. What are your thoughts? P.S. Gator has to actually put effort into his answer. No saying it's not Destiny B.S. Gator, every three episodes since episode 24, 45 minutes, 23 seconds. Wow. That's being called out. <laughs> it's not uh, this what do you think, RPG? So am I just picking between these games coming out? or No, it's basically just that, I mean, because those are typically like three games that people flock to. Destiny, yeah. Call of Duty, and Assassin's Creed. So, like, if you, I mean, you know, how do you divide up your time if you're going to play multiple games like that? Like, like, I mean, investment Ooh. games, even I would say. Yeah. Uh, usually, what I'll do, I if I like Assassin's Creed, I'll just use it for example. It's coming out same time around Destiny, uh, Beyond Light, and Call of Duty Cold, Cold War. I will probably just focus in on Assassin's Creed for a couple weeks, maybe a month, and just play the crap out of it. I, I just I can't really go from Assassin's Creed to Call of Duty. I, I can't do that. It's kind of tough for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm surprised you didn't mention uh, Cyberpunk, even though it got delayed a little bit. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's my big one I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that Cyberpunk even comes out. Yeah, we we can dream. Oh man, that they'll they'll raise the studio, please. It's bad enough <laughs> no, people are getting death man. threats. Give me a break. Well, did you? I mean, did you hear what? I, I mean, I the heard. reason why they delayed it and stuff. I didn't hear that. <clears throat> oh, oh well, well, it's because they're releasing it to like what nine different platforms. Well, that's what they're saying, but no, they're notorious for crunch. And I mean, I guess like they're like threatening people and abusing people and things like that. And so they backed they, off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Considerably. And now there's like lawsuits against them and stuff like that. No so. shit. I didn't hear that part. So here's, here's hoping that the game. Yeah. Here's hoping that the game even comes out. Oh man. Could you imagine? If they cancel the game, like it's just gone. No, it's coming out. Oh. It's coming out. No, it's coming out. They, it's just hey, hey, finish it when it's done. Release it. Don't push it early, please. So many games do that today. They push it out and then say, well, we'll just patch it. No, it's yeah. not the way. You put out a game that's ready to go, man. I'll wait. Day one patch. There's so many games yeah. to play right now. We'll wait. We'll play something else. No big deal. If Destiny, oh, hold on, I got knock on wood. If Destiny said they weren't coming out tomorrow, or I'm, I'm sorry, tomorrow, if you're listening to this podcast right now, and said uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to wait till the end of the year to release it, I'd be okay with it. I wouldn't be happy about it. I wouldn't be giving people death threats. Uh, yeah, it's a video game, guys. Come on, um, I'd be fine with it. I wouldn't like I said, I wouldn't be happy. But I will tell you this to answer your question, Jealous. I did order Cold War because I love, love, love to play zombies. And my son and I both will jump in, and uh, it's got a really good co-op, a new, brand new co-op story this time. And they've really improved zombies every time they come out with zombies. And that studio that makes um, the Black Ops series, they always have the best Call of Duties. It's my favorite. So, uh, what? yes, Treyarch. Treyarch. Treyarch is the best. They're the best. <sighs> All right, smartass. What's your answer? 
Well, actually, it's kind of like RPGs. Is basically you just you know pick one game and then you just throw yourself into it until you kind of burn yourself out on it and then you can go to a different route i mean the only problem is is that i mean i would say like like he said you know do assassin's creed first because that one actually has like a beginning middle and an end yeah so that way you could go ahead and like for me i mean i'm really excited to play the cold war campaign just because it looks beautiful yeah I mean, I don't really, I mean, I wish they would just sell the campaign for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, and then just do PvP separate. They should have a separate zombie game too, because it's so, there's so much to do in zombies, man. No, there isn't. There is. Fucking run around and shoot zombies. All right, you get on PC, we'll play. (laughs) No, I'm good. I'll show you. Um, But yeah, but I mean, I would definitely put Destiny at the back end of that list of, um, you know, don't like dedicate your time to this because it's going to basically suck up all of your time and you're not going to be able to play Assassin's Creed and everything else, which is why everyone who plays destiny has an enormous backlog of games that they aren't playing. Uh, I, I, I got just one thing to say to jealous. It's not destiny. Sorry. It's not, it's not destiny. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, that was your question, right? That is correct. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close it out this time. All right, so here we go. All right, this is gonna be a long one. Hang in there. This is from Sweaty Spooks. Question for the show: Is it very often you see or notice someone offering free help to new light players, either through LFG or streamers? I know that in Pokemon culture, when it gets close to the holidays, many players will set aside what are called breedjects, competitive breed, uh, com- competitive bred Pokemon rejects, because uh, they aren't shiny. So you will have hundreds to get rid of. And they, what they'll do is they'll send them all out on big holidays so that children who, who try Wonder Trade for the first time usually receive really good Pokemon to start with. Do you think the same principle or assistance idea could be applied to Destiny upon expansion releases to help players understand more about the game and inner Destiny knowledge concepts that took most of us a long time to figure out, especially as solo players, and how would this type of thing impact those players? Did you get all that, RPG? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, what do you think? I mean, for the most part nowadays, that group of, we, I used to play Destiny with, they don't really play anymore. I haven't really spoken to them. It's just, it happens. Nothing. Yeah. We didn't have a falling out or anything, but so... What I'm getting at is basically I am a solo player now. Does he mean like hiring like a full time Sherpa type of deal or? No, I think he just means like in order to like just have somebody like help out and just to kind of go like, oh, hey. So um, well, one thing you may not know is um, so Destiny came out with a thing called New Light. So like new players or returning players, they could go mm-hmm. ahead and run like these like initial story campaigns where they get introduced to the mechanics and things like that. And it was kind of a shit show because they didn't really tell you what to do. They just kind of yeah. dropped you off and said, here, fucking have a good one. Well, some people bounced off of that and didn't continue playing. Other people had people that would like sit with them and go like, Oh, Hey, this is what you do. And this kind of thing. Yeah. And those people probably stayed longer than the others. So yeah. that's kind of, where he's going at so like somebody like yourself who like you know has been away for a while and then you go to jump back in and then all of a sudden you're trying to do this thing and you're like okay well what the hell do i do or where do i go next you know just somebody like to guide you and go like oh yeah this is what you do next well i I don't think that really falls on bungee at all that sounds more like a community type thing yeah uh, issue to me yeah i mean i mean, I, i think it'd be pretty cool yeah I mean, have one week where it's all about uh, all about yeah. helping new people. Maybe if De- if Destiny or if Bungie sponsored something with streamers, because I mean that's where most people help yeah. is streaming. You know, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of service streams out there. That's why all they do is help people that haven't run a raid or haven't gone through trials. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mean, they could even spotlight certain people or groups too, like they do every week for certain things, but ones that specifically help newer players out or returning players out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, they never really did anything with guided games to a degree. 
like that. Yeah. You know, like that would be really cool to see. Like, oh, hey, you know, hey, the Guardian Downcast, they did uh, this clan. They did, you know, four hundred raids with people, like, you know, through guided games. I mean, but no, I mean, they didn't do anything at all like that. No. And in my last clan, we did do a lot of guided games, and always felt really great when someone waited a whole hour to to match up with you to play a raid. You know, and yeah. for the most part, ninety percent. About nine out of ten of people that we helped were very nice people and just really needed help. So yeah. it's a great idea. I just I guess it just wasn't executed great. I don't know. I, I hope they do something down the road like that. That'd be nice. So all right, great question, Sweaty Spooks. Um yeah, great questions all around. Yeah. We well, I'll tell you what, guys. If we didn't get to your question this week, we'll get to it next week. I know we're jumping into new new light. Uh, not new light, but uh beyond light and uh you know we're all gonna be real busy but uh if you ask us a question we'll answer it so uh thank you very much to our community for sending questions our way and that leads us to our last part of our show this is where we pick our songs for our spotify playlist i'm sorry our award-winning guardian downcast show playlist it is just a sample of what the two of us and our guests like to listen to and we invite you to listen to it as well just search for guardian downcast show playlist on spotify I have links and all that good stuff in our show notes if you want to check it out. And we're now on iTunes as well. Uh, as of now, before we add our songs for tonight, we have 457 songs, 32 hours and 42 minutes of beautiful music representing all of us and all of our past guests for over a year now. So thank you for that, guys. I'll start with our guest here, Mr. RPG. What do you got for us tonight? I pick uh, Orgy, Blue Monday. And also Metallica, Whiskey in the Jar. Oh, man. Those are good songs. Nice. Yeah. They uh, just just mean a lot to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I've just, they're in my workout playlist, and I heard them the other day, and I was like, I really like those songs. I'm just going to mention those to those guys. Good deal, man. <laughs> no, no, like, sentimental value or anything. It's just they're, they're good songs. I got you. Good picks, man. I was hoping you were going to put an orchestral one in there. <laughs> no, uh, the the last song I I saw this question. You asked me this question uh, off the podcast, but the last yeah. song I listened to was uh, "Mr. Blue Sky" by the Electric Light oh, Orchestra. Great song! <laughs> now you gave me ideas for the next show. Yeah, and I just think of group little group dancing around. <laughs> That's right. Oh man, e- ELO is the one of the greats. Great bands, yeah. man. Wow. All right, Hazel, what do you got for us this week? Thank you for posting them. You were the first to post this week. I couldn't believe it. I about about fell out of my chair, man. Yeah. You know, (laughs) hey, I I mean, I bet you were, especially after last week. (laughs) Uh, We won't talk Uh, about that. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a shame that I even got my picks in before you did, I would say. I forgot to add them, folks. I forgot to add my. <laughs> I was harping on on everyone to put their songs in so I could get them queued up, and I forgot to even add my songs into the the chat. So yeah, yeah sorry. Let about that. let it be known that it's not a mistake that I've ever made. <laughs> you have not. So, um, my first song uh, was actually inspired by our uh, Discord because um, I don't remember exactly the conversation, but um, I basically said something about basically like you know get the dirt off your shoulder kind of thing and i had that song stuck in my head pretty much all week long so i went with that song from jay-z nice and um another song that um just you know randomly shows up on spotify um was like a stone from audio slave and i haven't heard audio slave or anything from audio slave and probably you know in 20 years almost maybe wait a minute so wait a minute did you check our our playlist i think i added that a long time ago like a stone like a stone yeah oh oh wait a minute it might have been another rendition of it my bad my bad yeah it was it was another group that did a cover of it i remember now Ah. my bad Ah. sorry i'm gonna interrupt oh no worries i was gonna have you add another one if you did so Uh uh-huh i would have added nickelback um, oh God, dodge the bullet again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are my picks. So, good deal. Um, Gator. 
Uh, uh, my first pick tonight, uh, I like to pick something new and old. I try to at least. So this group was one of my favorite groups as a teenager, and they delivered a ton of great hits in the 80s. Uh, they originated in London, England in 79. I know, a lot of you weren't born then. And, uh, and the song I chose is off their second album, Reach the Beach. From 1983, it's the song Saved by Zero by the rock group The Fix. These guys still tour the world today. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, for my second pick, I've been wanting to add this song for a while, but uh, there's been so much great music out there, it's been competing with it. Uh, this is a collaboration of one of my favorite Canadian musicians, thanks to Mr. Agent H out there. And it's an up-and-coming female artist. It's off of one of his more mellow rock albums, and it's just a great listen. This song will put you in a great mood if you're a little down for the day or it's been a rough day at work. I actually... All right, you can you can record this, I guess, Sin. When I get home and I'm in the shower, I listen to this song all the time. It's such a great sound. A great, mellow, kind of a country rock song, to be honest. Uh, it's off the album Casualties of Cool, and the song is called Mountaintop by Devin Townsend and featuring Che Amy Dorval. And together, man, the harmonies that they have, just it just really gels really good. Zan's pick for the week, he chose A Nervous Tick Motion of the Head to the Left by Andrew Bird. And he says, if you recall a Dan Finity story in which a concert in Cincinnati, he accidentally blocked the tour bus of Andrew Bird. This is him. And he really, really is good. Ask Dan about this if you haven't heard. I think we did, did tell us that story when he was on our show. Uh, anyway, enjoy. I love this song and listen to it at least once every other week. All right. Oh, so for this week, Mrs. Gator chose The Birthday Party by the 1975. Nice. Uh, That's she's been got, on my list. She's got, good, she's got good taste. She says it's really pretty sad, but uh, she still loves it either way. Hey, just want to let everybody know, we do post videos of our playlist picks. I select them here and there from each of us in our channel, Music and TV. So if you want to check out the videos, I'll usually post them in there. Saves you some searching time. Guys, I think we're done. I think it's a wrap. Another episode in the collection. For our listeners out there, just want to let you know we have 68 other episodes with interviews from gamers from all over our community. So just take a look at those, especially if you're new here and you're just finding out about us. Go in any order you like. So uh, hopefully, hopefully you'll check that out. That's really cool. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Mr. Hazelnut tonight. Mm-hmm. This fine gentleman, I, you guys probably don't know about this. This is something that's been going on in our Discord. We've been having kind of a, a friendly competition between a couple players in our Discord. A Mr. Helios and a Mr. Larman Kentucky. <laughs> and they have been fighting for first place rank in the season uh, rank number for this season since it's been so long. And I think, I think Larman finally outlasted poor, uh, poor Helios. And, and as, as a gesture of goodwill, Hazel Im- initially put out a message saying, listen, whoever wins the, the seasonal war this year, uh, give me a, one of your favorite charities and I'll donate $50 to him, which I thought was really cool. And then later on, he changed it up and says, you know what? Both of you guys send me your favorite charity and I'll send $50 each to them. So thank you, man. I thought that was a really, that was a really great thing to do, man. I was inspired. (laughs) So I wanted to give you a shout out, man. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, those guys actually inspired me to even come back to destiny, um, from my break that I took because I was like, wow, you know, these guys are just killing it out there. So, yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. Well, thanks for doing that. That was pretty cool. I wish I would have thought of it first. Damn it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I also wanted to give another shout out to, uh, burning wing zero. Uh, turns out he did test positive for COVID. I mean, we can, we can tell everybody cause he's mentioned it in the discords and, uh, he's got a, uh, he's got a quarantine for 10 days from his kids and his, and his wife. And we just wanted to just hang in there, bud. We just wanted to just shout, give you a shout yeah. out. And, uh, he is a mod in our discord and a really good guy. He always likes to, to, uh, take a part in, anything I say in the, in the destiny in our, in our podcast and, and dissect it and say, well, actually Gator, you needed to, you for, you said this, but it should have been this. That's all right, man. I love that. I love that stuff. It means you're listening, man. So, uh, yep. we love you, man. Hang in there. 10 days will fly by before you know it and, uh, be well, brother. Definitely, man. Hang in there. Hey, RPG magnet. We had a great time tonight, man. Thanks for coming out. 
I know uh, it's been a long, long night for you here, brother. I know you're tired. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Well, hey, yeah. before we leave, uh, do you want to give a shout out to your your uh, where people can reach you on Twitter or maybe your YouTube channel? I think you said you do actually. Some streaming. Yeah, I actually, don't have any social media at all besides YouTube. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, check out my YouTube channel. I haven't really been doing much lately. Occasionally, I'll stream, but start getting more interest in the channel, then I'll start doing more with it. It's uh, RPG Magnet 3-4. Well, thanks again, man. I We had a great time tonight. I, I, I wanted to hear your story, and you'd have been, you've been on my short list for quite a while, so thanks for that, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys having me on. I'll do it anytime. Excellent, dude. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thank you. Well, Hazel, where can everybody find you, sir? Uh, Hazel, NT, anywhere and everywhere. You can find me on the Twitter at Todd, the Gator. Remember that's G A T R. You can also find me on YouTube, steam and PS4 as Gator, all caps, G A T R underscores in between and Gator space GDC on Xbox. You can find our podcast on whatever podcast app you use out there to catch them. Uh, just listen to it, uh, through that means, or you can go to our website, guardiandowncast.com, And you can also play individual episodes. If you like, it's pretty cool. You can email us at guardiandowncast at gmail.com and we're on Twitter at guardian underscore D underscore cast for show questions or whatever you want to talk to us about. Or like I said, guardiandowncast.com for all the deets. And I want to mention also we're on Instagram. Just search for guardian underscore down underscore cast. And uh, we're trying to put, you know, some kind of pictures of, uh, represent our guest each week. So if you don't mind RPG, could you send us a pic? Anything you want, man. It could be if your Call of Duty player. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Just something that represents you that you could send us. Just throw it in our chat. And uh, we'll post it on our Instagram if that's cool. Sure. All right. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank yep. you. Hey, everyone. If you like what you're listening to, do us a big favor. Spread the word out there. Hit that share button on your podcast app of choice and leave us an iTunes review. We'd appreciate that also. Those do help if people find us. So, uh, you know, guys, before we leave here, I think we have another another treat tonight. Here it goes. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Scum Dad's Corner. I saw something yesterday that did my head in. I was driving my van back to the yard and a car went past me and it was gold. Someone had wrapped an Audi TT in gold, uh, gold wheels. I mean, if you're going to do that, you're not a baller. You're not a player. You're a fucking dickhead. I mean, an Audi TT is a nice car. But if you're going to wrap a car in shiny gold, it's got to be a Lamborghini or Ferrari or something like that. Not an Audi TT. Who the fuck do you think you are doing that? I, I would hate to meet this person. I think they're probably arrogant, idiotic, love themselves. Ah, oh, it's, oh, it's ugh, it did my head in. I just, it's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Audi TT is a nice car, but bloody gold. Ah, oh, I might as well wrap my motorbike in bloody aluminum foil. You know, for the same effect. Oh, piss off. Uh, it did my head in. I'm not having it. No, no. Next time I see it, I'm going to crash my van into it. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get that one off your chest. Love you all. Bye. I fucking love his rants, man. They are so good. Oh, my God. Thank you, Uncle Scum Death, for your Scum Death Corner for the week. Uh, I did want to mention one more thing before we leave. Deej tweeted his last tweet as a member of the Bungie team today. Uh, he actually did a walkout video of the front of the studios. It was really heartfelt. So if you haven't checked it out, we've posted it yeah. uh, in our Destiny News channel. So uh, thank you, Deej, for all the years of greatness. And uh, we'll miss you, buddy. We'll miss you. Hey, everybody, continue to be safe out there and yeah. take take care of one another. And wear the, wear the mask, guys. Wear the mask. We're having spread still. It's not over. So please wear that mask in public. Guardians are measured by their ability to come back from defeat. So stand. Fight! Thank you all so very much for listening. And later, Guardian. Toddles.
Hey, RPG, thanks, man. That was a great time. Uh, I know you were on Dad's Tales a long time ago, and I remember when you were on there. I Like I said, man, I, I really wanted to hear your story tonight. I appreciate you hanging in there, man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. It was a lot of fun. I know you haven't been on in Destiny for a while, but uh, you know we appreciate you sitting in the TWAB. I know it was probably a lot of stuff you probably weren't familiar, <laughs> weren't familiar with. But, but uh, yeah, I'll get back into it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be on there Monday. Yeah, it's going to be fun, oh. man. It's going to be fun. Yeah, no worries, man. Sorry, it's not it's not destiny.